add to stage. We are added to stage and present. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I got to put all this stuff back on in. Ah, uh, Lissai. Lissai, indeed. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but here we go. There, there we are. Okay, so. <laughs> All right. Yay. We are we are live. We are on. I can hear my my own voice coming through spectacularly. Hello. Eight people already here. Sevus. Welcome everyone. Hannah, Luke Tube 1000, iconic. And uh, we also got Roblox here. Woohoo. Great to have you guys here. Awesome. Oh, Mojo Service. <laughs> Immediately, Uzi going to die. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that stuff here very soon. Awesome kid, 900, 900. Welcome, Chloe. Hi, you made it on time. <laughs> it is I who happens to be the late one. Uh, Olasaka, one, two, three. Welcome. Hey, it is great having everyone on here. Yeah, I apologize for being a little bit late. I had to grab up some food. I have been spending a, a good part of the day helping my sister move. So I'm finally, finally here to uh, to talk about all the fantastic things about regarding uh, regarding our lovely Mojo drones. And yes, there we are. There's the little drone. Oop, we're going to come back to that here in a wee bit. <laughs> we will we will be uh doing the trailer breakdown here uh in a moment but first uh i just want to make sure that we had as many people here ready as possible in case anyone was running a little bit late i did want to run a little bit of interference uh to make sure that uh that people had some time to uh to pop on in so mojo uh what the heck was the anime that right there, if you want to know, Mojo, that is uh, the dangers in my heart. And I had slapped together, uh, I'd slapped together some of the uh, some of the footage from the latest episode because I was going to quickly talk about the dangers in my heart again to run interference uh, until more people show on up to discuss. Uh, to discuss murder drones. So for those of you who are here for murder drone talk, don't you worry. I have it. It is here again. We're going to, we are going, we are going to, dis we are going to discuss this stuff. I have made a little video right here trying to break down as many bits as I possibly can. And uh, I've even timed it so that way we can stop, we can talk, you guys can share your theories, insights, opinions, and I will also have my chance to do the same. So, uh, that is uh, as the goal, that is the plan. But again, quickly running interference. There's some people who I know are probably going to be just a smidge late. So just like I was. So that is why. That's why I have the dangers of my heart. Uh, but I believe to be the penultimate episode for this second season. And if you haven't yet seen this show, I highly recommend it. The dangers of my heart is so Oh, it is just so fluffy, good, ice-melting romance. Uh, <laughs> words fail me on just how much fun this is. Uh, Gotababa, 06. Hello. Hey, hello. Yeah, and Chloe says we need ISO here. Yeah, ISO is running a little bit late. Hopefully, they'll be able to jump on here soon. So, as a quick rundown of the most recent episode... The most recent episode of The Dangers in My Heart has to do with a sports tournament. And man, I I miss sports tournaments here in the States, like what we would used to do in school. Like when I was a teacher, it shocked me just how few outdoor activities kids were doing anymore. When I was a teenager, when I was in elementary school, especially, I mean, we had sports days. We had water days. People would go on out there and have absolute fun. You would have these kinds of special occasions, even in high school. And it was great. Where did these things go? <laughs> I feel like I feel like schools out here in America 
uh, kind of need to get their act back together. Uh, I know that the 90s were not a golden time in American history. However, I feel like we kind of need to go back a little bit and and uh, reintroduce ourselves to some of the fun of the 90s. But in any case, uh, what, uh, what happens here in this episode is that uh, Ichikawa is asked to participate as the uh, as the writer in in a uh, oh I duh, I hate it when the name is right there on the tip of my tongue one of those competitions where everyone kind of gets together you have the people who form the horse form the base you have a writer on top who has to go and has to steal uh, has to steal flags and steal bandanas from the other teams and whoever has the most points at the end of the day wins. Ichikawa and his friend Adachi basically are competing against each other to show who is going to win Yamada's heart. I mean, if anyone's been watching this, everyone already knows that Yamada is completely dedicated to Ichikawa. That is, there, there's no question there. And in fact, in a way, the this episode isn't even trying to actually call any of that into question. Instead, this episode is meant to serve as a tying up romantic loose ends before we get to the big episode at the end of the season. If you've read the manga, you know what's coming up. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, please binge The Dangers in My Heart. You are going to enjoy it. Even if you're not a huge fan of romance, there's a lot to laugh at. There's a lot to enjoy in this particular story. But yeah, so this episode is effectively there to help wrap up a whole bunch of loose ends, reaffirm that Ichikawa does like Yamada, that Yamada likes him. These two numbnuts, however, haven't told each other. So uh, that is uh, that that is something that is going to have to be resolved and will be resolved actually very soon. And just as far as where I come from as a writer, why I enjoy this show, and not just because I enjoy a fun romance, but as a writer, I enjoy... Uh, this particular show in this particular episode because you know what it's actually really relatable in a very embarrassing way to have these kinds of installments within your romantic stories because yeah middle school kid middle school age kids and even high schoolers will do silly stupid stuff like i will prove myself to the person i like at such and such game or at the assembly or at the dance, it happens. So many kids do this. And they don't want to talk about it because we all know deep down it's super embarrassing. But seeing that played out in a story is kind of nice because then you're like, oh, I'm not the only one that does that. Yes, I'm still an idiot for having done it. Or if I am doing it right now, I'm kind of an idiot for doing it. But hey, at least there's other people out there. Yay! <laughs> As Ruben said, I will destroy a, my 8,000 USD PC to prove my crush. I'm strong. Yeah. I, let me prove my let me prove my love with the burning of a thousand suns and that I will destroy my romantic or or athletic rival. <laughs> Honestly, no one cares. <laughs> but I do remember back in high school, I would do stuff like that as well. Did it? Did I ever get the girl? Heck no. Because I freaked out most girls doing stuff like that. And that's kind of the fantasy that we have playing out in The Dangerous of My Heart. That you have Yamato who's all like, oh yay, prove yourself to me, Ichikawa. Though, in a way, not quite. Because actually, she does say, at one point in the episode, she does say, I don't really understand why you're trying to fight, a fight with Adachi over me. I mean, it's kind of my choice, who I like. <laughs> So, I again, a lot to like right there because you have a character being, because you have all these characters honestly being relatable, being realistic, and in a way calling each other out for the stupidity of, well, <laughs> you don't prove your love to someone else just simply by beating someone else in a game. It's fun to compete for yourself, but it's ultimately a fantasy that someone's going to fall in love with you because you're so good at some kind of sport. Uh, just, uh, just watch out, just watch out and take care of yourself. Okay. So <laughs> I've run some interference. ISO says is there with us in spirit, 
Rubens, it's great to have you here. Wow, Gato Baba, uh, it's 3 a.m. where you are at. You are a trooper. Rubens, you are about to you are about to uh, turn uh, the uh, your pumpkin is or your carriage is about to turn back into a pumpkin uh, within an hour. <laughs> and I am happy. Thank you guys so much. Those of you who are staying up really late to be here with me for this. I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Chloe, this reminds me of in sixth grade when my two friends were both crushing on me. One of them was a childhood friend outside of school and they hated each other. Good times. <laughs> yeah, sorry you had to go through that, Chloe. But uh, yeah, it, it, it happens. <laughs> this kind of stuff. Uh, if, as an adult, please don't try to do that. You're not really proving anything. If you want to be good at sports, be good at sports for yourself because you enjoy it. And uh, if you like someone, communicate with someone that you like them, even though that can be really embarrassing, because if you don't communicate, you don't really get anywhere very fast, which is the reason why the dangers in my heart has gone for nearly two seasons and Ichikawa and Yamada haven't gotten together because the proper communication isn't there yet. God dang it. <laughs> Rubens, back then we straight up threw rocks out of the window to hit people. Sometimes things didn't go well. <laughs> we also made fun of the army during the military dictatorship to show how base we were. Never ended well. Oof. Oof. 1970s. Great times. The 70s. Oh, man. The 60s and the 70s were absolutely the best of times. Right? Right? <laughs> okay. So, Mojo is getting us back on track right here. I have I, I have dilly-dallied a little. I have dilly-dallied long enough. Uh, with a little over 10 minutes. Uh, but first, before I get to what Mojo just wrote, Chloe, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I'll almost never be embarrassed with the topic of confessions and love, thankfully. Great for you, Chloe. Great for you. That, I, honestly. <laughs> me, me and my personal history, oh boy. Oh boy. All of the hell that has been unleashed by confessing to people in the past. Whew. But those are stories for another time. Let's get to what Mojo just wrote right here. If the Absolute Solver really does have a true form, would it really be some singularity that you theorize, or would it take on some organic eldritch body? We are going to get to that. Oh boy. Mojo, what is in the what's in the teaser trailer for episode seven next week? Oh, the, oh, wow. I thought, I thought I understood what we might be getting with the singularity. I am not so sure anymore. In fact, everything that's kind of been presented to us in this most recent trailer is immediately make me like, I had to start switching gears and dive into a whole new realm of horror, uh, of horror storytelling. And I mean, that kind of makes sense because all, each episode of Murder Drones is is a dedicated homage to a uh, uh, to a subgenre or a niche within horror. And I just did not expect that we would get this one. So let me quickly bring this on up. Uh, let, let me quickly uh, let me quickly bring up what we might be seeing here before we really start watching this and start breaking things down. I think that what we're going to be getting in the next episode is a homage to apocalyptic horror. Now, an interesting thing is, is that apocalyptic horror has changed recently thanks to the popularity of stories like The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead has changed things to the, the horrors of the zombie apocalypse or you watch something like Priest, or you read Priest uh, from the from the original Korean manhwa, and it's like vampires have taken over. Humanity is now locked inside of these inside of these weaponized cities. Pew pew pew! Fight the monsters, fight the demons. But originally speaking, the subgenre of apocalyptic horror was when people had to confront the end of times, whether that be that the devil is being reborn, the devil's being summoned, God is coming to the earth, or some sort of crazy thing is about to happen that will absolutely annihilate the planet. And, and you have to rely on, on the occult or on religion to either deal with defeat or survive the apocalypse that is coming. That is the kind of horror story that we are about to get here. 
and uh, and we will go over that. Let me just quickly uh, read what some of you guys have uh, posted right here, and uh, I will then explain how we are going to play this all out. So Roblox, the singularity awakens. ISO, LOL, I'm antisocial, so I'm embarrassed by a normal conversation. It happens to the best of us. Don't worry, ISO. I've seen the trailer. He has spread some organic corruption. We will get to that. Uh, Rubens, according to science, the solver would technically be a non-existent void, basically an antimatter void area, which is at least a theory fully empty. Interestingly enough that you bring that up, Rubens, I don't know if you've seen this, but last weekend I was reading an article that said that scientists were finding evidence that refuted the idea of dark matter and that could even then fly in the face of antimatter. We know that we know thanks to the experiments that CERN has conducted that antimatter is real. But you have this interesting question of what's actually in the universe. Is antimatter floating out there? Does dark matter even exist? What is even the nature of black holes? Who knows? New science is completely is completely throwing into question so many things that we thought we knew just a year ago. Uh, Chloe, I feel you. I so I'm pretty. I'm used to. Uh, I used to be pretty antisocial. LOL. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Say same here. I was a weird kid in in high school. I really wanted to be social. I was antisocial for about two years. I then became a social butterfly uh, during my senior year. But people treated me more like a social moth. <laughs> a lot of people get creeped out by moths. Not so much. Uh, not so much about uh, butterflies. But moths and butterflies will still fly in your face all the same. And I was one of those guys. <laughs> uh, Rubens, according to Sin, at least, we all know how flip how flip-flop Liam is. Yeah, who knows what Liam's going to do to us ultimately. We got we can only speculate right now. Mojo. Yeah, it seems as if it spread organic corruption around the cabin fever labs. Maybe. And I'll actually talk a little bit about that because I because in order to prepare for for tonight i jump back to of course uh episode four having a look at the cabin fever labs trying to find certain clues because there are some interesting clues placed here and there uh throughout the trailer that uh that we will discuss as we get to that uh roblox lol i talk to more people online than real people yeah that's kind of what my life has become if any of you had met me in college I would almost never have interacted with anyone online because I had such a full social life in college. And now as an, now as an adulting adult, <laughs> uh, here I am with you guys. <laughs> Any case, uh, Rubens V is a live cannon. Potentially we're going to see, we're going to see. In fact, again, we, we've got some clues. Uh, Chloe, same here, Roblox. I'm also online. I'm also online schooled, so it's kind of a given that I have more online friends. Rubens, I'm going to go get cro uh, croquette to eat. Mmm, delicious. Have some. I actually have some some food right here that I will munch on every now and then because I haven't eaten anything in a while. Uh, I so I've got plenty of theories and ideas for the apocalypse of copper nine. Oh yes i'm so excited for you to share those roblox yes many many theories chloe i find it cool how there's a lot of religious aspects in this new episode and we will be discussing that john is here thank you so much for joining us john i think v is still alive john i i agree with you i will actually be very surprised if v is dead and even if v is dead there's still ways for her to come back so that's the kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to the disassembly drones. It's so hard to keep them down. It's so hard to kill them. There's a very good chance V is still alive one way or the other. Uh, Rubens. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that uh, Chloe V is most likely okay. I have a gut feeling she somehow fled the scene. Yeah, she either fled the scene, dominated the scene, as I will get to here in a bit. Sorry, guys. I keep I, I keep uh drawing this out right here <laughs> trust me we will get to all of this or it's a very there's a very good chance that jay will also show up uh rumens uh because uh antimatter is something weird because you can't exist and not exist at the same time yeah antimatter is weird and again cern has discovered what they have by by doing all of their crazy particle accelerator experiments that 
people still believe will cause a black hole in the middle of the planet. And if they should manage to do that, we will all instantly blow up and have no idea what just happened to us. Uh, iconic, I don't see, see her being alive personally. Okay, then. If you want to explain why, I'd love to hear that because that, that's a viable opinion right there. And it'd be interesting to see what you have to say, especially since the Sentinels were created to take on the disassembly drones and whatever other machines Absolute Solver created. That was confirmed by Liam in an interview, that the Sentinels were created by the human scientists to fight whatever, whatever robots were taken over by Absolute Solver. Um, Ruben's universe just being weird, like damn. Uh, Roblox, uh, God is giving us content updates. <laughs> God is just giving us content updates. <laughs> I love that. That is a great way of putting it, Roblox. As we discover more stuff, God's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, the DLC is coming, guys. <laughs> Mojo, is the structure under the labs referred to as a church or a citadel? It, I would say, cathedral. So between a church and a citadel is a cathedral. And if you want to know, true cathedrals are basically both. They are churches that can easily be turned into fortresses. I would hate to have to fight against a, uh, a cathedral. Iso, well, antimatter needs to exist in a void because matter does not exist in a void. Matter and antimatter cannot mix, so they need to exist separately. And when they mix, it goes kaboom! Uh, Chloe also says it's referred to as cathedral mojo. Hey! Chloe, you and I are thinking on the same wavelength. Perfect. Iconic. Uh, when was it referred to as anything? We don't actually know. But what does it look like? It definitely looks like a cathedral. Uh, uh, ISO, my online life is far more expansive than my social life. Roblox, same. Very interesting theory is that the Cabin Fever's lab may contain a secret. Oh, my. I bet it does. <laughs> John, well, that's very terrifying. I hope we don't uh, implode our planets. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you guys are talking so fast, I can barely keep up. Uh, Iso, I do see an Eldritch V appearance happening, but I doubt we'll ever see her like she was before. That is indeed a possibility. Uh, uh, Hola, Ska, Hola Saka says, in the trailer, we can see fire, so that means that there may be oxygen, and we can also see humans. And we are going to talk about that, Hola Saka, believe you me, because I was impressed with who we saw. And also, I think, like, there's one human that kind of looks a bit like a cowboy. And he's wearing a doctor um, uh, little badge going on right here. And I was trying to. I was trying to get his name. And I'm not sure what his name is. And so it, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Because I feel like the name is important somehow. But I, I can't tell why or how because I can't read his dang name. And I will show you guys once we start watching the video. Uh, Roblox, if you travel, if you if you time travel to before you are born, they theorize that antimatter would be created and it would try to kill you as quick as possible. Ah, the timeline writing itself. Uh, Rubens, if he survives, it's good and bad because it was easy to survive this, not going to lie, because it makes the scene pointless. And you know what, Rubens? Put a pin in that. Please put a pin in that. Uh, because I think, I think that there is an excellent discussion to be had about whether or not you can or should bring characters back from the dead within your stories. Uh, iconic, uh, uh, talking to uh, Holosaka, Tessa did say that the air was toxic. That is true. You can still have oxygen. It's just going to be very toxic to, to breathe in. That could cause all kinds of problems. Uh, John, I believe that this is a flashback. The plant, plant is undergoing permanent nuclear winter. I agree with John. Uh, Mojo says, uh, seen in the trailers, uh, there is a literal cathedral in the cabin fever labs, and cathedrals are mostly used for worshiping, which leads to the idea that the solver may really be the some sort of eldritch god. Truly, indeed. Uh, we see candles lit in the pre-shot. Oh, yes. Oh, all the creepy candles. Who is the person who's keeping all these candles lit? Uh, Ruben, since uh, the left side and right side are reserved for clergy training under standards of architecture. Oh, that comes back to how the cathedral... It is a cathedral because of the size and structural architecture. I imagine there's a clergyman's school inside. Yeah. Uh, iconic. A cowboy? Doesn't he have a hard hat? And maybe it is a hard hat. It definitely looked like a cowboy hat to me. Chloe, his name is Dr. Chambers. Uh, okay, good thing that you guys are able to read it because I had the hardest time. I could not figure it out. Uh, so, Dr. Chambers. Okay. 
So I have caught up right here. I love how you guys are really getting into this with all of these different things you're writing there into uh, into the chat. Ah, this is why I like this is the energy that we need. So here is what we're going to do. The video, as I have it set up, and I know it's been black screen this whole time. Don't worry, we're going to get to it. I am going to show just straight up the trailer. And then, and then once I've shown you the trailer, it's then going to get broken down bit by bit by bit. And we are going to discuss each and every bit that we're seeing right here. So without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, so there's your ref there's your refresher for the trailer. That creepy heartbeat that we get there at the end. I like how that's going to be a tie-in to uh, uh, to episode two, which was heartbeat. The heartbeat is important, and it's something that I that I myself have been wondering about. Why do the drones even need a heart? We don't exactly know. We don't know yet. It probably is something akin to Absolute Solver trying to mimic life in some kind of way. That would be my guess, because it because Absolute Solver in a lot of in a lot of flashbacks and every time that we've encountered its eldritch being, it tries to replicate flesh. For whatever reason, Absolute Solver is obsessed with being alive. It wants a body and i love how you for instance you got sin who's all like the flesh demands invitation i love that line because it's so creepy but maybe it actually means something more maybe it could very well be that uh the absolute solver would want to actually have human bodies but for whatever reason it hasn't been able to assimilate a human body and instead has had to use the drones and use its powers to try to replicate flesh. It definitely likes having flesh around. As Mojo has pointed out, you have all of these weird fleshy tendrils and organic bits all over the place. And when we start going um, screen by screen, or I should say shot by shot, frame by frame, we are going to see lots of bones. Absolute Solver is trying to do something with a body. And we don't yet know exactly what that is. It's kind of terrifying. <laughs> hey, that's a, that, I mean, that's murder drones for you right there. Okay. So, <laughs> and saw the fan fix. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have actually tried my best to stay clear of, of, uh, a fan fiction for murder drones. I, I've wanted to, I've wanted to steep myself in, uh, in the canon before I begin to sully myself with all of that. <laughs> um, could that be solver's heart uh, beating is what Mojo asks. I, th I think it's possible. Uh, Rubens, uh, perhaps a consumer obligatory parasite, the solver might need to consume to survive like a virus. There's a very good chance that that is the case. Uh, ISO, maybe the solver wants absolute perfection. It needs a physical form to achieve that goal. And that has been something that I have wondered about for a long time, even going back to some of the earliest episodes of Murder Jones, episodes one and two, when I saw like, ooh, absolute solver. This is something that's been engaged. Back when I thought that there was a puppet master, I had wondered about the potential of someone who is seeking perfection. And what they are going to try to do for, to do to get that. Um, Mo, let's see here, uh, Mojo. Imagine in episode eight we get serial designation N versus True Form Solver. I want that battle. That sounds amazing, Hannah. I'm so hyped for this episode. Same here. Oh, I am so excited. 
Roblox about the pit that appears. I would like to point out that we see that we see a that we see a similar but much larger version in episode six when Tessa shows us Earth. The pit could be a hole to the core which the solver uses to collapse the collapse the planet's core. And you could very well be onto something right there, Roblox, because I am convinced that in order for Absolute Solver to destroy a planet, it has to initiate some sort of ritual. These rituals require elements, require preparation, require building, maybe even require a little bit of cosmic magic in order to make it happen. And that pit could very easily be part of that. Uh... Let's see here. Ruben says, all I want is NJ and Tessa versus Solver. Best showdown ever for real. Mojo, what does the Solver think he is? Perfect Cell from Dragon Ball Z? We don't exactly know, really, with Absolute Solver. Not yet. And that's one of the reasons why I, I'm really happy that we got what we did from Glitch Productions today, where they showed a screenshot and they said, and they said, uh, they said that we will be getting tons of information in this upcoming episode. This is the time for us to get a diluge, a info dump, a lore dump of some kind to help bring everything together in a great creepy package before we have the the climax and the resolution to the show. Uh, so, with that uh, being said. Then let's start let's start going through the different pieces. Okay, so here is our first shot. Our first shot of this trailer is the hallway where V was supposed to be killed. And what you can see, what you can see is you can see off immediately to the right. You can see the tail of one of the sentinels. Here we have just all of this oil all over the place. Then we have the severed cords in the back for the elevator. So what we, what this is meant to tell us right here is that this is this is an establishing shot. We are right to where the last episode left off. There's not going to be any weird time skip or anything like that. The one the the Liam and friends wants us to know we are right where we left off in dead end. And here is the scene of carnage that is left behind. Interesting thing is, is that you have this trail of oil. What does that exactly mean? Could the Sentinels have dragged off V? That would imply that, yeah, she just got eaten. She's gone. But... Because this is V, and because in because in that same episode, we come back to the cores, to the beating hearts of the drones, of the disassembly drones, and we know that they can still come back. And uh, what's her bucket? Uh, Alice even said that if you don't heat them up, they then go rat, they then go rampant, and they begin to attack and consume. It doesn't seem as though even the sentinels quite realized or at least the humans who created the Sentinels didn't quite realize that the disassembly drones did have that feature and that they could unleash their heart and begin to absorb all this other stuff and uh, create the Eldritch Abominations that we saw back in Episode 2. So Rubens is saying right here, no, that oil was there already in Episode 6. Uh, let's, uh, you know what? Because you say that... Um, let me actually quickly, ba -ba -da -ba -da, I got to jump through my files. Let's go on over to Murder Drones episode six and bringing that on up. I'm going to, I'm going to mute it uh, just in case copyright, because that would suck. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Okay. Coming on through. Ah, yep. You are right. You are right. Oh, so yeah. Ruiz, you know, you are right. Yeah, we have that oil. The oil is supposedly leading on up to uh to Doll, which was meant, which was which was all part of Doll's little trap right there. So no, yay, Rubens, thank you for keeping me on the straight and narrow. Very good. Uh so, hmm, hmm. That, I mean, that already begins to change uh, uh change a few things. So if that oil was already there to begin with. 
we see one and coming popping back on over to this. We see that there is a collapsed sentinel off to the side. This could be evidence. Hey, shut up, you. I'm going to stop that right there. I'm going to pop back on over here. That could be evidence for V still being around. So I will, we'll have to see. The, again, though, this is mostly an establishing shot to let us know where we are definitely at. And yeah, uh, it could it could be that V is still very much alive since this oil had already been there ahead of time. And we see a we see a defeated sentinel off to the side, way further back than where the other sentinels were that V was fighting. <laughs> Rubens, oh no, some V somehow has returned. Like I said, put a pin in that because I definitely want to talk about the the uh the the pros and cons of having a world where your characters can come back from the dead and where it makes absolute sense. This is something that I know a lot of people are like, no, no, you should have consequences. Characters should stay dead. And in some cases, yes. In other cases, no. In some cases, it's actually a whole lot more fun to have it where your characters can come back. And I said, we will discuss that uh, later. Uh, Chloe says, I'm curious uh, what N's reaction will be about V leaving them. I assume he'll say something as soon as the episode starts. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that he'll, I'm hoping that he will bring that up. I'm hoping that he will address it because V has been such an important part of his life for so long. And, uh, and just to kind of move on from that. Yeah, that would be, that, that would be bad. And even with, and even, even within an, a 20 minute episode, you can very easily, dialogue goes fast. Dialogue goes fast. And you can, with just a few powerful lines, uh, process what N is feeling, the trauma that he's going through because of V's supposed death. Roblox, V died and the Sentinels dragged the body back to the pit, though I doubt that they put the core in the oven. Yeah, yeah. See, even if she got torn apart, the core could still be there. And even then, we know that the company... Uh, we even know that the company still clones the drones who they deem to be valuable. And who killed more people than V? <laughs> uh, Mojo. So, Camille, uh, how would pow how would you power scale the absolute solver? Well, Camille's not here, so Camille can't say anything. This is Lars here. Uh, and I don't think Camille, despite all of my uh, all of my insistence that she should watch the show, has actually sat down to watch it. <laughs> uh, but how would I power scale the absolute solver um, on the same level as any of the eldritch uh, entities that you have from uh, that you have from Lovecraftian horror? Effectively, basically impossible to beat in a fair fight. You have to defeat them at whatever game was employed to bring them into your reality. That is how you defeat an Eldritch Abomination. There's very, very few stories where anyone can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Eldritch entity and survive. And that's kind of the point, is that an Eldritch Abomination or an Eldritch God is so unknowable, is so powerful, is so alien, that there's no way that you could ever take it on in a fair, in a fair challenge. Even in one that's kind of, uh, that even in one that's kind of weighted in your favor. Uh, Rubens, uh, the elevator shaft is closed. The only thing, uh, open here is the door onto his left or onto the left. Uh, yep. Uh, so who knows if she lived or not? Yeah, we don't really know. Uh, I mean, I still hold to the fact that I still hold to my opinion. I shouldn't say fact. I hold to my opinion that V is alive. And if she has been killed, she's going to come back in some kind of way. How they pull that off is what I'm really interested to see. Uh, Rubens also writes down here. The Sentinel spy has confirmed the worst. Somehow V has returned <laughs> random worker drone. <laughs> you know what? I want, I want a shot. Now, now you bring this up. I, I suddenly have this image in my head of, uh, of, uh, Uzi's dad, uh, riding a Sentinel into battle through the snow. I, I, I just, I now feel like I need to have that scene. I need to have that realized. Uh, Roblox, what if Uzi just doesn't just didn't drop the cockroach and then we wouldn't be in this mess? Yeah, she didn't pick it on up. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, John, just look at the example of combating eldritch beings of Dr. Strange versus Dormammu. 
excellent example. He, ha he has to beat it in a game of endurance with time travel. Yeah, Doctor Strange has to endure being killed over and over and over again and bank on that Dormammu is just going to get so infuriated with that. The fact that he can't kill Doctor Strange outright, that he will that he will grow tired of being stuck in a time loop and just and, and just let him go. That was a great twist, and I love it. Uh, Ruins, what if the cast was smart? Problem solved. <laughs> Don't go into the house. The murderer's in the house. <laughs> I love how we are just roasting the characters. Yeah, it's what we do. We roast because we care. Robux, I don't think that N is carrying a time stone in his pocket. I hope not. I'm not ready for that crossover. Mojo, is it safe to say that the solver power scales that uh, that of a universal since it destroyed Earth entirely? And Tessa did say N would have to choose the universe or Uzi uh, now if just for the sake of the planet then. Potentially so. Uh, it's about the mood, Darren. Exactly. Thank you, John. Thank you for bringing that up. It's about the mood, Darren. <laughs> we will make out in that haunted house, even if it gets us killed, because dang it, it's on my bucket list. <laughs> but coming back to it, the Eldritch entity that we call Absolute Solver is most definitely one that is on a cosmic scale that could wipe out not just planets, but could potentially be a rip in the fabric of the universe itself if allowed to do what it wants to do. So uh, we, I think that we can definitely say that, which is again why the only way to beat this thing is to beat it in the rituals used to bring about its purposes, which takes us back to why I said I think that this episode is going to be a homage to traditional ap apocalyptic horror uh so that's what we will that that is what we will do uh <laughs> my friend wanted to know if you killed her family and if you're single <laughs> I, I love her beg i am so sad that she's dead she made me laugh so hard <laughs> rebecca would have loved mean girls Oh my gosh, but put that put that in a fanfic. That is a worthy fanfic right there. What if Rebecca had lived? <laughs> she will be missed. She is missed. Can't wait for Master Chief style N. No, I'm excited for Doom Guy N. That's what I'm excited for. I want to see N go full Doom Guy and go through the portal and just wage an eternal war against the singularity. <laughs> okay, so. That was our establishing shot. Let's then get on into our next shot. So, you can't sit with us, Rebecca. Fine. So here we have a shaft of fleshy bits. Oh, that sounds so bad now that I say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, here we have a mine shaft, which seems to be covered at least from what we can tell, seems to be covered or at least laced with the weird flesh that Absolute Solver creates. This is most likely one of those, it's most, this right here, I don't think that this is the, exactly the route to get to the, the weird fleshy hole that we see at the end of the trailer. Instead, I think that this is a way deeper into the, into this underground cavern or say this deep, this deep world cavern where we're going to see um, potentially the way to stop the ritual because it seems like the ritual is being carried out within the cathedral. Once we get to that, this does not look to be a part of the cathedral. And there's another shot that shows us that Tessa is going into another cave. So this is the, this right here, this is disconnected from what I think largely from what we see in the cathedral. This is instead an establishing shot to tell us later on to look out for this particular mine shaft because it probably has another secret to it maybe even the saving secrets that would be that would be my guess because this is just so very different from what we see in the corrupted cathedral um <laughs> look at how beautiful it is somehow better than the average brazilian public hospital oof oof or sometimes the or the average Austrian hospital. <laughs> Going mining for copper? 
yeah, maybe there, yeah, maybe the shaft exists because of deep mining to get copper out of copper nine. Hey, for its namesake, uh, how much copper do you think they get on an average from that mine shaft? Uh, hopefully enough to justify uh, colonizing an entire planet because that is expensive. And we know that they're not finding any unobtainium down there. Oh, it's such a horrible name. <laughs> unobtainium. <laughs> Uh, they got to get, yeah, exactly. Ruben says they got to get a lot to afford an entire colony on other planets. John, we have crucifixes shown in this trailer. Is it a coincidence that the episode is releasing around Easter? Potentially so. Potentially so. I am very interested in that shot with the crucifix, and I will show you guys why when we get to that screen because it is incredibly creepy when you stop it <laughs> and you're like, oh, what the heck? It suddenly, it suddenly puts into a different context all of the shots of hands that we've been getting. Could episode eight arrive arrive around May? I hope so. I certainly hope so. If not by the end of April. Um, burp, 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 burp. So yeah, zero, here we have this this mine shaft. Ooh, secret tunnel. We're just gonna have to see uh, what what's what's at the other end. Um, so moving on. Mojo, I ain't waiting another two months uh, for episode uh, for episode eight. You gotta wait. This is just the nature of independently created stuff. It, it, that's just the way that it goes. Oh, so you wish, and I'll tell you this, Mojo. The people working on murder drones, Liam and his crew, and everyone over at Glitch, wishes to heaven and hell back that they could have all of the episodes out pronto for you and honestly for themselves they are anxious to get these on out there and i'm just going to speak for myself as a creator i i'm like i want to have my books ready for people to read right now but it just takes a lot of time and so many things can go wrong along the way and you just you just have you just have to roll with it i remember that my the guy who was acting as my editor and publisher for my first book before i took it back from them I once asked, so like, yeah, I, I, one of the very first thing I, one of the very first things I asked him is, so when do I get to release my book? And he's like, whoa, 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 there, Lars, you have no idea when your book is going to get released because I have no idea when your book is going to get released. Anything could happen. Do not make promises that that you can't keep, and I'm not going to make promises that I can't keep because it will really hurt people when you say we're going to be able to get this uh, we're going to be we're going to be able to get this episode or this book or this movie out pronto and if you can't reach that deadline people start thinking that you don't take things seriously so like i understand why glitch is playing it close to the chest when episode 8 releases and honestly i'm going to give them the time because i think that liam definitely deserves that and they've done a great job with the show thus far so i'm going to give it to them uh, <laughs> Roblox, they're going to pull a mega mind. Your weakness is copper. I love that. Thank you, Roblox. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> uh, yes, Tis Ruben says, yes, Tis a religious chant, which is definitely fits this episode aesthetic. Uh, episode eight releases in May of uh, 2026. Oof, please. No, I can't wait that long. I will wait, but I don't want to wait that long. Okay. So real quick, <laughs> moving on, before we leave the shaft completely, I'm just going to point out that by the lanterns, it looks like there's bones. And the reason the reason why I say that I think that those are bones is because when we get to see some of the other screenshots, uh, it definitely, again, looks like there's a lot of bones around. Uh, the uh, Absolute Solver is doing something weird. And, uh, and I feel like that might be significant uh, for later on. So continuing on. What we got. Do, 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 do. Okay. So here we now have a shot of an office space. And, and here we, so I, yeah, we've got, we've got right here. We've got our, clunky computer screen we've got our we've got our uh tower uh, we've got our pc tower here we have our nice little light we've got a crackling fire down there and then we have a portrait with help painted across it 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, things went bad here. I've been trying to figure out who these people are. Because I, look, I don't know about you guys. You can tell me if you see this. I see bunny ears. If not bunny ears, cat ears. Whoever, whoever was painted right here, they got some cat ears or bunny ears going on. <laughs> and I don't know who would want to have a portrait of themselves painted with uh, bunny ears or cat ears. But I guess if you're going to live in a cathedral down at the center of the earth, uh, who's really going to judge you? Uh, Lovers of Wolves says the poster on the back seems to be a, a picture of two drones with the word help. Uh, so uh, it could be two drones. It could be two drones or it could be two humans. I'm not entirely sure. So here's what I'm going to So I'm actually going to I I'm going to posit two different ideas to you guys. And I want to hear your opinions. Um I want to know if you got uh, say if these are humans. Let, let me just go with that first that these guys are humans. Uh what we have right here is we have eccentric humans being dumb like most of the humans seem to be in uh in the series and they have a weird party portrait. And the reason why help is painted on there is because as we see from the potential flashbacks, humans were in the cathedral earlier on most likely when the core collapsed and weird things started happening and they scrawled messages for people to read, please help us save our souls or what have you, hoping that someone might come on in, get the message and try to save them. But that didn't turn out. So here we just have humans, humans being dumb, humans reaping what they sow. If it is robots, here's what I think. I think that the two drones that we saw in, again, one of the little uh, teasing screenshots, the ones that people are wondering, could it be, could it be Nori and Yeva? That originally you had those two drones hanging out in the cathedral, doing their own thing. And they were also being silly, like many of the other drones that we've seen back at Uzi's colony. So, hey, why not have a painting of yourselves wearing ears, doing your own thing? And then weird stuff started happening as Absolute Solver began waking up. And they began to realize that something was wrong and started scrawling messages for help just in case anyone came. Kind of like how we saw that there were tons of messages scrawled about don't look at their eyes, don't look at the light back in the last episode concerning the Sentinels. Maybe there are messages that we have yet to see regarding anything to do with the apps uh, regarding anything to do with absolute solver that we as the audience and the characters as well are going to have to pay attention to in order to avoid something bad happening. I could see this swinging both ways. Humans just being dumb and weird or could very well be that these are the, that these are the worker drones and that something started happening and they began writing down warning messages. I want to quickly hear from you guys. What do you think here in the chat? And that's going to give me a chance to quickly drink something before my before my throat gets too dry. Mm. Also to quickly eat something. Because as I said to you guys earlier, I didn't really have the chance to eat. Because I was helping out moving for a good part of the day. Mm. Chicken nugget. Yummy. Really? Nothing? Well, I mean, you guys have been discussing right here some stuff. Hey, I'm Omega. Welcome. Glad you could make it. John says the legs are gray drone legs. Yeah, I can see that. It definitely looks like drones. But there's a very real chance, I believe, that these could still be humans. Humans just being dumb. <laughs> Ruben's trying to stoke up uh, problems right here with the shipping wars. This isn't a shipping war stream. We're going to stay out of that. <laughs> Someone say chicken. Roblox, how do humans get to different planets before intervening the flat scree? Uh, who knows? Uh, we, don't, we are completely in the dark about how on earth humanity uh, went across the stars. Maybe they found spice and started, flo and started folding in time and space. Chloe says, I'm not really sure what to think, to be honest. Mojo keeps saying praying to the solver. 
potentially, maybe that's what they started doing in the cathedral once Absolute Solver took root. Who knows? We are going to find out. All right, then. Uh, let's continue moving things on. <laughs> Lisa al -Ghib. Uh, Thank you, Iconic. Lisa al -Ghib. So again, just slightly closer up, a little bit blurry. It's so hard to tell. I want to say that they're drones. They could still be humans. I don't know. Okay. So, coming on over to this. Uh, so, we get a very quick shot of the locker rooms. We have Yeva. So, obviously, connection to Doll. Doll came down there specifically to find out what's been happening to her, find out what happened to her parents. So, hopefully, Yeva's got some interesting information hidden away in her locker. I tried to find where we might have seen a zero, let's see here, a zero 024 from before. We know that Nori is zero zero 002. And uh, I didn't see zero zero 002 uh, brought up here in the trailer. So I started looking around for evidence of zero 024 anywhere else within the show. If any of you guys know where 024 might have popped up, I would love to hear it, hear, hear from you guys. However, I couldn't find anything myself. Uh, when I went looking for it, for instance, back in episode four for the drone who was found dead underneath the floorboards, I tried to see if they had any identification for 024. I didn't see that uh, back in Dead End when Alice opens up the oven and you see all of the names. I didn't see any references to 024 either, so I, I don't know. Uh, John, we've been seeing these gray shifts since uh, episode uh, three, uh, Cabin Fever on the mannequin, and we saw it again in the camp picture Khan showed, and also again on the flashback of the girl drone killed in episode six. Yeah, these kind of ghostly figures, that is something interesting. I'm not exactly sure what to make of the ghosts that we've been seeing throughout the series uh whether that is the influence of absolute solver itself uh or or maybe some sort of warning i i don't know um there ruben uh avs a avenue ave absolute solver imperium invicta solver <laughs> the icon says they have white mouths those can't be humans Roblox, well, I mean, the tech here could mean that humans are not the first people here because they would have no reason to bring old tech. Uh, Ruben's property invasion. Mojo, imagine the cathedral being a school for zombie solver drones. The cathedral is Nori's high school. Maybe this would explain why Nori really wanted to escape. She wanted to escape uh, the old nuns that were uh, that were cracking their rulers across her knuckles. <laughs> John says, I think that they're test subject outfits or the kind of shifts that might be worn by a by psych ward patients, like a hospital gown. That would be horrifying if everything in this show just ends up being stuck in like Uzi or N's mind. And it's all just, it was just a dream. You are really stuck in a psych ward. Oh, that would, I would actually really, really hate if that happened to be the reveal for murder drones. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously we are going to get some information about Yeva. I tried blowing it up a little bit more to see if I could get any of the names right here. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to believe that 024 is actually Thad because it looks like a TH right there. Imagine if Thad came from the Cabin Fever Labs. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> well, that'd be fun. Maybe that's why Liam hasn't done anything with that. That is the real danger in all of this. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, uh, I I took a I took a screen took a little screenshot right here of the names uh, at the names that are on all of the jars that Alice has, um, and I again I could not find anyone whose name began with a T right here. Uh, nor any reference to 024. Uh, there seems to be characters known as Max. Um, and let's see here, Connie. So we got Max and Connie, uh, who are other drones who had their hearts ripped out uh, in order to prevent uh, their, their little disassembly beating hearts from going berserk. Now then, 
I, I actually kind of want to, to talk about this right here. <clears throat> so, um, Nori and Yeva were both part of the underground cabin fever lab programs where we know based on the last episode, thanks to Tessa, that the humans were experimenting on the drones with absolute solver because they, they hoped to control it, but it didn't really work out that way all too well. And I, I think it would be interesting to see if that by infecting a worker, regular worker drones with Absolute Solver, if it is that Absolute Solver over time tries to forcibly evolve those worker drones, not just into the Eldritch Abominations that we saw back in Episode 5, uh, when we see V get transformed, but that there was a change to truly transform them into these disassembly drones, a more perfected version of the abomination that we saw V get changed into uh, in that flashback. And, and, an, and, an, and an essential function or an essential uh, element of those murder drones is their heart, their beating heart, which can rip itself free if needs be, and begin restoring the body by uh, by consuming more material. And because we know that Uzi is being transformed by Absolute Solver, we know thanks to the merch leak that she is the vessel for Absolute Solver in this episode. There's a very good chance that she herself is forming a heart, just like the other cores that we see that Alice has collected. And because they all have names given to them, it's a, there's a very good chance that Alice killed some of her old friends and co-workers and collected their cores put it before putting them into this oven and has been experimenting. Has been trying to figure out what exactly happened. It's sad that she's gone now because even though she was basically a Wendigo murdering and consuming people, she had a whole lot to share that we're definitely not going to get, at least from her mouth. <laughs> So uh, to answer your questions, Iconic, I think that Alice actually killed her old co-workers and friends when she realized that they were being transformed by Absolute Solver into murder drones and that she's just kept their hearts because she maybe didn't know how to destroy them or lacked the ability to do so, but found out that by heating them up, they became sluggish and they wouldn't fight back. So that would give her a chance to observe them and even experiment on them if she wanted to. Uh, again, we just don't fully know because, well, she got her head smashed in by a sentinel. Uh, Lover of Vol says maybe to give them distinctions. Maybe. Like how people la label their various experiments. Maybe she thought it was more fun to give them actual names. Maybe she named all of her victims or named all of the murder drones that she helped to kill <laughs> and harvest their cores. Um, Silva, uh, Ruben, so Iconic kind of says to Rubens, murder drones don't typically have actual names, though. We don't know. We had, uh, To that Iconic, we don't actually know, because the only murder drones that we've really spent any time with have been N, J, and V, who have had their names, and we know have had their names since before being transformed into disassembly drones. So we don't, we can't exactly say for certain, just because we haven't met enough uh, disassembly drones to truly say. Roblox says they have serial designations, but single letters can only go so far. Yeah, uh, there's that. Uh, Mojo, it's possible that Alice secretly had the solver since the Sentinels were made to kill solver infected and disassembled drones and really they were built to attack all drones and this comes down again actually to uh something that liam had said uh during his live interview from glitch x that the that the uh, sentinels were built to take on all kinds of robots and in part because the humans had no idea who or who would have been infected so they just created the sentinels to get rid of anything that might have been taken over by absolute solver um, uh, that's it. John, let's see here. John says, go back to previous comments, scrolling up. So John, no, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, we see drones wearing, uh, those and they're not ghosts. Uh, they're gray shifts worn, uh, by all cabin fever lab drones. 
okay, so potentially, I don't know if all of them wore those, those, uh, those clothes. So uh, again, let me actually quickly pop on back. I know this kind of derails us a little bit right here, but I'm going to pop on over to episode two. No, not episode two. I need episode four. So popping on over here to episode four. Let's quickly whoop. All right. Yeah, music, music, music. Okay. So popping on back on over here. All right. Okay, then. So we got so we have Nori with her with her gray shift. And and then we have Yeva right over here who's looking completely, uh, co just completely in shock and horror about whatever they've just been through. There's her husband. Uh, she seems to be wearing a dress, wearing a suit, a long suit. Uh, and it seems as though the others are wearing jackets, the ones who have popped up out of the cabin, cabin fever labs. So the 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 gray shift is a feature of clothing that i think any of the drones could be found wearing i'm not in i'm not exactly sure though if it is a true trademark of the cabin fever drones um but it is definitely an article of clothing that could be worn uh as far as though the ghosts go john uh we do see we, we have seen after images of uh of sin for instance in places where it's like okay why is she there uh, especially again at, back at the cabin fever labs back in episode four there's so much that we don't know about what was being set on up because we know that doll was we know that doll was there trying to trace what happened to her parents that makes sense that checks and that she was kind of glitching in and out using the solver powers however there was a gap however there was a ghostly figure of sin presented to uzi that quickly vanished we have the weird creeping hand that was around where the vhs about uh about how to properly dispose of your drones was at and we don't fully understand how all of these various clues come together there's something far more far more supernatural than what we truly understand at the moment um, so eh, who knows? Hopefully we'll get an answer to that. Or maybe it's just going to be one of those things that's left dangling that people are going to wonder about. And Liam Vickers is going to be like, he, 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 I'm never going to tell maybe in part because I forgot. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. Uh, Roblox, you ever find it odd that three of the characters have single letter designations? No, no, I do not. Uh, so I, what I find odd is that uh, is that Ford could never get over the Model T. <laughs> the Amazing Gamer one one one. Fingers crossed. Uh, we find out why a taste of blood affects the Sentinels. Like, why would the lab workers program that? That is an excellent question. I think that the I I mean I'm just going to speculate that I think that the Sentinels were designed to indeed consume and destroy. And that as they consume something that isn't a part of their programming, that as we see the one sentinel freak out, it's trying to figure out what to do with this human that it just bit into. Should it kill it? Well, that goes against its programming, but maybe it tastes good? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to freak out and blow a fuse and then come back later on wielding a sword. Good raptor, boy. Good raptor. <laughs> Rubens, every gangsta till the dude on the back makes no expression for the photo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the person way in the back, who knows what that person is thinking or doing. Uh, Chloe says it may have been a malfunction, not JC uh, programming it. And that's potentially the case. Uh, only drones with collars are wearing the medical scrubs. Okay, that's a that that's a good point. That's a good uh, point to that's a good thing to point out there. However, we do know that Yeva's father was also one. Of, oh, not Yeva's father. We do know that Yeva's husband was also one of the people who was uh, who did have a designation. Wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, popping on back. <laughs> Man, we're going down a rabbit hole right here. Uh, let me get on. Let me pull up episode three. I was not expecting. I should, could have had all these episodes already uh, pulled up earlier, but I was not expecting that we would go down this route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We love we love you glitch music. Okay. So pulling us back towards the end. Uh let's see here. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Uzi going going crazy. Do not eat other people's blood. I don't care what kinds of movies or shows you've seen. It's not cool. It's not okay. Okay, so here we have Yeva. We've got 48. And boom, doll shows on up. Okay, so we don't exactly get to see her father's designation. We just see that we just see the correlating hat. The same hat that he had back in the back in the old picture. Bonum. Ah, absolute solver. Okay. All right. So that's uh well that that so much for that a uh, little bit of the uh of the rabbit hole right there. Yeah, say no to cannibalism, children. All right, let's move on. Let's extract ourselves from that particular rabbit hole. Uh, so we then come to burp, 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 what appears to be, this is what I think. I think that this is a crypt. I would really love it if it's a hell hole, but I don't think it's a hell hole. Now then, for those of you who might be wondering what the heck is Lars going on about right here, so crypts, tombs, hell holes, all different kinds of places to put your dead people and uh, and leave the dearly departed. When you're talking about a crypt, crypts are normally underground where you put a lot of dead people. A tomb can be reserved for a specific person or for a specific family. And normally those are more along the lines of mausoleums, your typical pyramids, or a special kind of cave that you have. Uh, uh, right here, uh, right here, however, one of the reasons why I'm like, ah, man, I hope that this is a hellhole is because of the different slots in the walls. I don't know how well you can see them, especially on over to the left, but those look like burial slots. So back in the old days, a hell hole would be a, would be a shaft in the ground where people would repel down with dead bodies to bury. People were inserted into these holes in the wall and left to completely decay. Uh, and after they had been completely, after they completely decayed, someone would go on down and scoop out all of the dead bits, all of the bones and throw them to the floor and then insert the new body. That would be a hellhole right there. Since we don't see a bunch of bones hanging around freely, there is a skull way to the back, but because there's not a whole bunch of dead body parts lying around here, I don't think that this is a hellhole. More likely, that, more likely this would be a tomb of some sort. Uh, but this seems to yet be another place in which Absolute Solver has kind of been burrowing into the earth, into copper nine. Here we see all kinds of fleshy bits, oil everywhere. Ooh, I am excited. Uh, John says it seems like a catacomb. It could be a catacomb. Catacombs are normally uh, are normally associated with the Catholic Church, with cathedrals. Catacombs usually were the places that would that you would have the dead buried outside of the church. So, as John says right here, the underground catacombs of France. The catacombs of France are kind of convenient, so you can go underground. So that way, of course, people don't have to interact with the dead. You have these massive tunnels where you can go and you can bury dead people and leave them there and not have to worry about any nastiness going on. You don't have to deal with a hellhole, which which requires a lot of work, and it, it requires less upkeep and money than building a tomb or a mausoleum. And especially if there's a lot of people, like what you have in Paris, you don't have to then worry about overcrowding your graveyards, which is a real problem all throughout Europe. A lot of people these days are no longer actually buried. Instead, they are cremated, and you have family plots that the ashes are then buried at because they just do not have the room to maintain all of the people who die from year to year. Sad but true. Ruben says, bro, this ain't no hellhole. It's just an average Rio de Janeiro school front door. Oof. <laughs> uh, Roblox, I want to hear your take on the pits. 
please write that down. I would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, I know I missed some other things that were said earlier. Um, uh, writer wannabe. Hey, writer wannabe. Welcome to all of us novice authors here. If you check the earth images that Tessa showed in episode six, there was also fleshy blobs in the Elliot Manor, just like in the teaser. You are absolutely right. Absolute solver when it went berserk and started killing uh, everyone at the gala. <sighs> Flesh started happening all over the place. And we know, we know from one of N's flashbacks that he was there at least for some part of the massacre because Sin is showing off a human hand that she has popped up out of her mouth. Kind of like how we see earlier V is sucking on one of the detached arms from another drone, except in this case it was Sin sucking on the detached limb of a human. Ugh. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, Mojo Service says, usually we get the solver or its powers on screen. There's music with, denom with demonic chanting. Got anything to say about that, or is it just coincidence? I think that that is, I think that right there, that's meant to actually connect us again to the idea of rituals, Mojo. The idea that more likely than not, Absolute Solver came to Earth, not because it just happened to plop there, but what we see at the beginning of Home, when Sin is at the bottom of a pile of corpses, flashing across her screen is a conversation. Someone is talking to her, and the and N, V, and J were ordered to build a spire of corpses. There is a ritual here. We just don't understand what that ritual is. But back in Tessa's room, either created by Sin or by Tessa, we see the body parts of humans. We even have a reference from someone at the Elliott Manor back in episode two that, uh, that Tessa has been dressing up the drones and has been giving them hair and the likes. And now we see human body parts along with all of these configurations with demonic rituals demonic symbology we see all kinds of weird occult stuff i think that the idea behind having that weird demonic chanting music is is a neat audio clue to what brings absolute solver to this world or an aspect behind absolute solver it's not just some entity that merely exists it was at least in our universe it was something that was brought in and again, that's why I feel like it's so key to understand that going into this next episode, because I feel like it's going to be revealed. There was a ritual. That's what brought Absolute Solver here. And if we want to stop Absolute Solver, we must stop the ritual. And Uzi is a part of said ritual. She is the vessel, whether it be that she is the key to unlocking Absolute Solver on Copper 9 so that we can rip the planet apart or if it's trying to use her as its vessel to become some perfected being, or something else, we just don't yet know. Uh, I'm Omega. It's like one of those Towers of Death. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, so, scrolling past the, the, the comments about the catacombs. Uh, John, again, this catacomb is all covered in fleshy bits. Could this be the result of Nori's solver rampage that we got a brief glimpse of back in episode 6? It could very well be the case. I I would I would hazard a guess to say that a lot of the fleshy bits that we see are old. That this is not that this is not something new. So uh, I I think that that's a good guess to make right there, John. Chloe, you're heading to sleep. Hey, thank you so much for being a trooper and hanging out with us. It was great having you here and talking with you. Uh, and I hope that you get a good night's rest. John also points out, yeah, we have the drawing of the pentagram on Tessa's wall. Uh, Mojo says, sorry, I typed the same question twice. I thought you didn't see it. Uh, Rubens, for every time a cute mate turned out to be a psychopathic serial killer, I get a nickel. I would have two, which is not a lot, but it's weird that's happened twice. <laughs> Nifty and Sin. Maybe you can squeeze me in this. <laughs> and you have three nickels. Look at you getting so rich. I'm Omega. The reason why I brought up the Towers of Silence is because they have parallels to uh, Demisaga 21's pilot where the corpses are used for rituals. Interesting. I, I just don't know enough about the Towers of Silence, unfortunately, to comment on that. But thank you for sharing that, I'm Omega. Uh, Chloe, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, John, Sid from Toy Story and Sin would get along. Oof. Oh, please. I, <laughs> that's a, that's a 
horrible ship in the making right there, John. <laughs> Also, I don't think Sid would survive Sin for very long. She would really like what he does to his toys, and then she would probably tear him apart and incorporate him into his own toys. Ugh. <laughs> Iconic. Uh, Rubens, uh, V and J 100% fall under that. True. So four nickels it is. Indeed. Four nickels to you, Ruben. So moving on. Wow. We are not even like a quarter of the way through this. So a little bit of a whoop. So a little bit of pulling this on up right here. I don't know how well you're able to see it, but there is indeed a skull right at the mouth of the entryway leading into wherever this is supposed to go. This could be the mine shaft from earlier. We just don't yet know. And again, it just looks like, yeah, whether this be a crypt, catacombs, a, a hell hole, a tomb, dead bodies were buried here of some kind. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But coming back actually to what I was saying, I did... I did loop this on in here about how back in episode five, we do get all of these references to bones, the occult, the pentagrams, yada, yada, yada. Okay. A little bit of a closer up. You should be able to see the skull right there at the bottom, right? So something creepy awaits us, uh, within, within this, within this hole. Uh, I, I, I don't know what really could be in there. Um, and an interesting thing is that as we are going to have a look at later on, we do see that some of the tendrils from all this fleshy stuff seem to be alive and can definitely act. We could get a good jump scare where either N, Tessa or Uzi get up close to this hole and then the tendrils come on out and just pull them on in. Good jump scare opportunity right there. I'm Omega. I recommend checking out uh, videos about uh, the demo storyline if you want to know what I'm talking about. Spoilers, but there are zombie bishops. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, that live, laugh, love is Tessa's room. John, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, that poor girl. <laughs> uh, Roblox, since we know that the Absolute Solver can create flesh parts from black holes, I suspect that the Absolute Solver is drilling with the black hole to the center of the Earth. Uh, going back to the large pit on Earth in episode six, where Elliot Mansion once stood, we can predict that Solver tore a massive hole all the way to the core. The pit could be a hole to the core, which the Solver uses to collapse the planet. I suspect that the corpses are either for a ritual to collapse the core or used to build a massive physical body that is capable of physically collapsing the planet's core into a black hole, like the second atomic bomb works where you get enough pressure. Uh, and it implodes. Roblox, I like your line of thinking. I think that has a whole lot of merit. I agree. Uh, the, it is definitely everything that we're seeing right here is all in preparations for something big to happen, whether it is to summon a body that it can properly use, uh, whether this is all part of some great magic in order to collapse the planet. What it wants to do is it wants to destroy the entire planet. And what I think part of the uh, one of the flashbacks is going to be all about is going to be about how humans or drones prevented the planet from being completely destroyed the first time. And that absolute solver is simply trying to finish what it began. That is what I suspect we're going to come across. Uh, Rubens cleanest room of a 14 year old Brazilian living in Sao Paulo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mojo, to make your theory more interesting, the Solver was an entity outside of our universe trying to find a way in until it finally found it, maybe uh, maybe from either of these rituals or Sin becoming a zombie drone. I think that, that, I think that that's also a very viable uh, uh, theory right there, Mojo. Uh, I do believe that without Sin having invited Absolute Solver in to be friends, because if I remember correctly, the, the conversation actually asked, do you want to be alone? And if you say no, it then invites itself in and begins to take over the zombie drone. And unfortunately, it just happened to sin because that poor girl woke up at the bottom of a pile of corpses. Anyone would freak out and not want to be alone in that situation. So it's it's not really her fault. She was just taken advantage of by Absolute Solver in a situation outside of her control. Poor little robot. Uh, John, okay, if flesh, are come, if flesh is coming out through black holes, what is on the other side of the black hole as the source of the flesh being pulled through to the side we see? Spooky to think about. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Moto says it's literally the solver's flesh. It could be, or it could be it trying to replicate flesh. We don't yet really know. Ruben, everybody theorizing while I'm even like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> uh icon says i imagine it's the flesh and bones of the humans that the solvers solver has absorbed i have wondered about that as well i think that there is an aspect icon to or uh, iconic uh to um to absolute solver where for whatever reason and i think it's more evil than it is wanting to not be alone that absolute solver needs to consume and integrate others into its being because it does refer to itself as we in episode two. So there's a good chance that it that may, while there might be a singular mind, like when it said, like when it like when it has said, when it refers to itself in the I, um uh normally through through sin, I think that there is an aspect of where it has consumed all these other identities and it's just incorporated that into itself and it then takes on the idea of a collective of a we though not in the sense of the borg where we are all united in some weird perverse purpose but rather that it's one entity that has absorbed all these other beings into itself and now uses their combined knowledge matter personalities to get across whatever it wants to do uh robox how did tessa find her way down there that is an excellent question we don't know. <laughs> There's a lot that Tessa hasn't been telling people. And that's something I'm very interested in seeing what's going on. I don't think that Tessa is controlled by Absolute Solver. I think Tessa genuinely is trying to kill Absolute Solver. Uh, I think that she feels responsible for everything that happened back at the Elliot Manor and for what happened to Earth. And that this is her own personal crusade to kill the thing that destroyed her home and destroyed her family, even though her parents were absolute jerks. Uh, she's still trying to get revenge. And I think what we're going to see is that her revenge will be cut short. I That's where I feel it's really going to go because I believe that N is the crux to everything. He is the one who's going to be the hero at the end of the day. Uh, so that's that, that's one of my one of my many theories right there. Uh, Mojo and the conversation says won't discard her like humanity did with her and it will keep her company and she will be there for a while. Yeah, Mojo, that's very good for pointing that on out. Yeah, absolute solver is kind of weird that way. Uh, John says it's uh, is down is just how children are. They love to dig through buckets of Lego parts and piles of discarded drones. <laughs> kids will be kids. Absolutely. Uh, Halo flood, but robots. Is what Roblox says, I agree. Oh, the flood, the flood is so creepy. Uh, Mojo, I did make myself a theory that uh, wherever the solver host, that whenever a solver host dies, their consciousness is put inside the solver's mind. I think that's a good theory, and we, we might see that play out. Uh, writer wannabe, I do not know if absolute solver was a quantum entanglement or a man made entity. We would have to see. I think that it truly is its own eldritch thing from beyond our own world, maybe even beyond our own dimension. Again, we don't know. And I think that actually the next episode will provide us with a lot more information that will finally help us put Absolute Solver into context. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rubens, I've defeated the Solver easily. Those guys are just dumb and trash. Flex, flex. <laughs> i see i see your claim right there rubens and i raise you an eldritch v uh i'm omega so if uzi is the linchpin for this ritual then what will happen to her if the solver succeeds is she going to be in the same proverbial eye of the storm or is she stuck in the core uh to your question right there i'm omega i think that uzi will be entirely consumed by absolute solver and become one with the entity I personally believe that there's a very good chance that the way that this all ends is that N goes into the singularity and fights and fights it within itself. And, uh, and that would be interesting to see how that plays out because then we could totally go the route of it with the whole ritual of chewed and just like the weird cosmic insane whatnot. That's supposed to be the end battle between the kids and Pennywise we could see something like that play out between N and Absolute Solver. I don't know. That might be even too weird for, for Liam. Uh, but it is a possibility. 
uh, Mojo, is, could the solver be from a higher dimension? Possibly. Uh, that's that's what I think it would be, especially because it, that definitely falls in line with the idea of the actual eldritch gods uh, from Lovecraft, that they are entities from that are just beyond us, whether they be from another dimension or they're just so ancient that they predate the known universe, which effectively makes them something from beyond what we know, what we would expect to be part of our own universal truth. <laughs> Roblox absolute solver is the last version of Windows. No, no. Oh, I could not take that. This is why I do not update some of my computers because I do not want the newest Windows to screw up everything that I've done. <laughs> uh, Mojo says Uzi is the solver's key to unlock the destruction of the universe. I do believe that. We don't know how that will play out, but I could definitely see it being the case. Roblox. If that happens and the ending is going to be a yelling match. <laughs> that could be interesting to see. All right. So continuing on. All right. So it, I don't really think that there's anything too much that we can grab from this. Other than that, we will see these symbols again for most likely when Tessa goes deeper into the planet's core. So right here we have the symbol... Uh, that that's been attached to uh, cabin fever labs, the skull in the tent. Um, that'll be interesting to see what the origins behind this is. It could just be something interesting that, that Liam and crew developed because it, because it falls within line of murder drones. Yay. Skulls. Skulls are cool and weird, but definitely we get a feeling like this is some sort of ritual or later on as we'll see like the cool opening to like, oh, you wish to see the absolute solver? Kind of like seeing King Kong beyond the gate or, or entering Jurassic Park. You must pass through the fires. That, that's kind of what I'm getting right here. It would be cool if those symbols were made of copper. They probably are. <laughs> All right, so playing a little bit further. Okay, here we have now finally a good look at the cathedral itself. Oh, this is a good gothic cathedral with sword, with flying buttresses. <laughs> now I got to think of Grunkle Stan. Conceal thyself behind an elven buttress. Uh, but here we have flying buttresses to keep up this ridiculously huge structure that is built into the planet itself. This isn't just simply sitting on some hill in the in an underground area uh being cool and creepy this is built into the planet itself which would work out well for absolute solver given all of the holes in the tunnels that we've seen buried and drilled uh further and deeper into copper nine i just think it's interesting that we see it all lit up right here with bright warm light completely disarming and lying to us about the evils and dangers within. And this right here is part of the whole old school apocalyptic horror because churches are meant to be holy sites. They're meant to be protected ground. Traditionally, you could go into a cathedral and claim sanctuary. Please, <laughs> Esmeralda, go and claim sanctuary. You could claim sanctuary and be safe. Uh, churches have ch churches have been a, a almost a universal symbol uh, throughout humanity as places where you can be safe, which is why whenever there is a story or a myth about violence happening in, uh, inside of a church or of a temple, it's usually very, very bad. So that's kind of what we're being set up for right here. This seems like a, this seems like safe harbor after all of the horrors that uh, N. Uzi and Tessa have undergone so far in the Cabin Fever labs, but ultimately... It is kind of like the lure of an angler drawing you into destruction. That is what this is. And yes, I do see that it is raining. And we're going to get another shot of that rain later on. This is interesting right here because they have basically their own atmosphere deep underground. This, I think, is kind of having a little bit of fun uh, with like the idea of like journey to the center of the earth that there is a whole other kind of climate and, and world to be, to be enjoyed or to be feared, to be explored deep beneath the earth's crust. 
chances are that what we see because we're going to later on see almost like it almost looks a little bit like terraforming has been going happening down there i think that when absolute solver had been unleashed earlier that it had created a completely new environment not just with fleshy bits but i think that it actually created a completely different um environment deep in deep within copper nine that it was able to transform this this open area to have its own atmosphere to have weather patterns and most likely it's not just oh this is just something weird that happened i mean it's gonna be playoffs something weird that happened but i think it's again in preparation for whatever whatever uh whatever ritual uh absolute solver has to has to enact and if we wish to draw a quick parallel remember it was storming at the Elliott Manor during the gala when Absolute Solver was unleashed and began to destroy Earth. There, that happened during a storm. So maybe a storm is also part of the greater ritual or ambiance. Or maybe it just likes the, or maybe Absolute Solver is just a sucker for drama and is all like, oh yes, we must, it must happen during a dark, stormy night is when the world will end. <laughs> Maybe that's just what Absolute Solver is doing here. <laughs> Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Uh, Lurk McGurk, welcome. Yeah, you are a bit late, but hey, we still have like two thirds of the video to go through. <laughs> Rubens, uh, theocratic theocracy is something I thought I would never hear. Yep. Uh, Roblox is, is down. Oh, you're right. It's a gear. It's a technology obsessed church. Ah, I love technology-obsessed churches. I wrote one into my book, Bleed, Steam, and Steel, though they don't really play much of a of a, uh, uh, of a a role in the book. Uh, I've been wondering how I'm going to, how I might remedy that for the second book. Uh, Rubens, it's raining underground, but I've got an answer for that. <laughs> Roblox, you notice that where the bell should be, there is a gear. Ah, yes, indeed. How very curious. How very interesting. Uh, Rubens, the, sol the solver generates large amounts of heat, which in turn evaporates H2O molecules around, which in turn, considering how long is there and how much heat it generated, rain would be created. Yeah, there's some logic there. Uh, <laughs> Robux is the Vatican, is the creepy Vatican. Uh, iconic, the absolute solver is definitely purposefully dramatic. It absolutely is. <laughs> Even how it announces is uh that when uh ooh you know, I, I i just got i just got to go to it uh ba -ba -da -ba -da. wait oh, do i do not yet have episode 5 hold on up hold on this must be rectified this absolutely must be rectified no no let me open it very good okay yeah yeah all right all right all right we're going to come to one of my favorite scenes in the entirety of this show. Okay. Class, tenacity, currently being alive. Well timed, giggle. <laughs> Absolute solver is absolutely a drama major. Well timed, giggle. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Uh, episode five, I'll, uh, we were having this conversation a while back about uh, uh, about which episode is the best of, of Murder Drones. And I just love episode five in part because I love Sin's commentary throughout the episode. She is absolutely insane. <laughs> and I love how the absolute solver through her it just like almost has like meta commentary on what it's doing as if it knows that it's being watched by viewers. <laughs> um, let's see here quickly uh, popping on up uh, to a couple things that were. Uh, yep. John, I'm a sucker for a well-timed giggle. Uh, uh, they haven't fed me since I'm always late due to my time zone. Yeah. I, in Arizona is kind of weird because we reject we reject the idea of daylight savings time and fun little history fact. When Arizona was brought into the United States as a, uh, as the 48th state, um, uh, 
uh, Arizona was all like, oh yeah, by the way, if you try to make us uh, abide by daylight savings time, we will have a civil war. That was that was the very first thing that Arizona said. It would re it refused to abide by daylight savings time, and if the federal government tried to enforce it, Arizona was immediately going to break away from the union and start a new civil war. <laughs> Uh, Lover of Wolves, do you think that Uzi being the new admin from episode 5 in V and N's visor will play a role somehow in the future episodes? Because we never get to see what that what, what that does. I, I think it will. And one of the reasons why I think that's going to be important is because that most likely means that N cannot be possessed again without Uzi say so. And I think that what we're going to see is that despite Absolute Solver taking over Uzi's body... Uzi is going to refuse to let uh, to let Absolute Solver have administrative access again to N, leaving N free to do what he's got to do to help save the day. That is where I think that that's going to be important, and that would be cool for Uzi because we, as we all should know by now, Uzi is not going to go down without a fight either. Wait, did I just experience deja vu? We all experience deja vu. <laughs> Uh, Mojo Sirs, I imagine a terrifying concept of the solver's true form. That's eyeballs all over its body, and those eyes are actually its hosts, and they are a part of it and aware that they can see through those eyes. That's fantastically creepy, and that reminds me of one of the monsters I wrote for a choose-your-own horror story, The Conglomerate. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can actually check out the origin story for The Conglomerate by checking out our series of videos from last year under the lost uh lost cogs in the machine from hell uh that is what kicked that all off uh definitely go check it out i the conglomerate is one of my favorite monsters that i have written uh so <laughs> iconic sense absolutely my favorite character if that wasn't already obvious really <laughs> Rider Wambi, it's too advanced. Uh, Rubens, by the way, if you try to enforce a vital globalist system, I will absolutely destroy your stability. Truly based. Uh, Mojo, a lot of people say that Sin is controlling Uzi, but people need to understand that Sin is probably dead and her body is just a husk. And the fact that Sin was never herself and that was always the solver. Mojo, you are correct. And I mean, and we do refer to Sin because as far as like as far as absolute solver has shown us of any personality, because the first time that we actually got to see absolute solver was back in Heartbeat where it was just so robotic. And interestingly enough, the way that it interacted with Uzi and N was that it seemed to have a bit of Jay's personality when it interacted with them. Not a whole lot, but you kind of got a hint of that. When we meet Sin, it's a different personality altogether. So there's a very good chance that Sin was used as a template for Absolute Solver to interact with N and the others way back in the day. And so what we're actually seeing is, yeah, we're seeing Absolute Solver be the one who actually does all of the talking, the interacting, the planning, the killing. But we are hearing, to a certain degree, I think we are hearing Sin's personality, which is why I believe, based on how we've seen a little bit of Jay and a little bit of Sin uh, in Absolute Solver, that that absolute solver most likely does consume and hold on to its hosts and the people that it kills that it holds on to at least an aspect of them um da -ba -da -ba -da. uh mojo as soon as sin accepted the solver it took her as its host and simply acted uh as a disabled drone within the manor yeah it was posing itself as thus but like, as I said, I do think that there's a little bit of Sin's actual personality in how Absolute Solver interacted with others. Uh, Rubens, forever, or maybe until N survives and allows the passage via terminal. That is if he survives. Um, and I'm curious to see if the Solver is actually female. I think that Solver doesn't have any gender whatsoever. I think it's just an, an, an eldritch entity. Uh, and, and it far exceeds uh, those limitations, would be my guess. Uh, Roblox, I think that Sin still has somewhat control over herself because the solver is more like a hive mind and there is one main person in control and the other's background. Uh, I am Omega also says, uh, not exactly the same thing, uh, but your description reminded me of common writer Regat Omega who has a uh, small eye cameras all over his armor where the audience of the DGP watch and support him. Uh, one of the writers says the thing from John Carpenter. Yes. 
And uh, Iconic says, I really don't think you can assign a gender to a demon computer program. Yeah, or, or it could just be binary. <laughs> uh, uh, Rubens, I think you missed the context of forever. I don't really know. I guess I have missed it. Um, but yeah, so uh, coming back, coming back to, uh, <laughs> to what we had here. Let me get another drink. Uh, so the doorway, the 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 nice glowing light, inviting us in. This is where we'll probably see the two drones who could be Yeva and Nori, or variations of them, or other people entirely. Suddenly pop up through this door, and we'll welcome them on in. And then the horror can begin in earnest. <laughs> uh, you get to see uh, humans right here. Humans uh, who looks like they don't. They are, these are not halberds. These are more along the lines of glaives, what the statues are wielding right here. They're not truly spears. I think they're more like glaives based on the long, uh, elongated blades at the top. So, uh, so there we go. Stop chewing so freaking loud, bro. Oh, you want chewing loud, Ruben? Here we go. No, I hear some more. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now you asked for it. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> with how much trouble the solver has has caused i think it runs on javascript Oof, <laughs> that's a great one <laughs> okay so continuing on all right so core collapse <laughs> not to be over dramatic but core collapse <laughs> this is one of those blink and you miss a moments hopefully some of you guys managed to capture some of those images as you watch the as you watched uh, the trailer this right here most likely takes us uh, actually back to uh the flashback when the humans begin to realize oh the planet is about to be destroyed oh and i think that's where we're going to start seeing um like what happened because i think Ultimately, again, what I think happened is that Copper 9 was supposed to be destroyed. The core was collapsed. A nuclear winter was instigated. And as what was told by us back in the pilot, Uzi just thought that the humans were being dumb and, and wound up destroying the, the world mostly. But, mo but very likely what we're going to learn is that because of their experiments with Absolute Solver, they unleashed the entity with it deep within the planet thanks to uh, the Cabin Fever Labs. And that something had to be done to stop it from carrying out the entire ritual. And that what is left within the church are the remains of the ritual that had been trying to cast. And that why it then called the, the disassembly drones to the planet was in order then to rebuild the ritual and start everything up again. So that way it could finish the job of destroying Copper Nine. So, boop, 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 moving on from the core collapse. Oh, 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 I love this shot so much. Look at this beautiful, gorgeous church, this cathedral. But it's got some interesting stuff. We've got some, we've got some barrels right here. Way off in the back is we're going to see another shots. These are computers, and there was a whole. Hole. There's the hole right there, the hole that leads right into the center of the planet. Very, very likely, uh, the ritual that uh, that Absolute Solver enacted was not something that happened all at once, and that humans that the humans were able to see what was happening, and that they began analyzing and experimenting with and documenting what Absolute Solver was doing unaware of just how dangerous this really was. Uh, so uh, 
and they gutted this cathedral. There's supposed to be uh, ways of climbing up to the upper levels that we can see there in the back, but that's gone. Yeah, you're right, Roblox. You can see the pit from the shot. It's right there in the center, uh, casting its eerie glow. And we have all of these warning signs right here up as well, telling us that this is no bueno. Something really bad's going on. And once again, the humans probably didn't understand what exactly they were messing around with. Um, <laughs> Mojo, way earlier, I didn't mean that Solver came from a higher dimension. I meant itself is a higher dimensional. I have a good way to describe it, but it may not fit in the comments. So I'll split into parts. All right, feel free to split into parts and we'll read that. So again, this is just kind of a, a little closer shot of, hey, look, that was there. It's in the back. This is interesting right here because this looks, uh, so here we are now at the back of the church. We're closer to the lectern area blasphemy yeah <laughs> okay quick story time quick story time because why not uh there is a church in bomberg bomberg is a city in germany that is sometimes called the german rome you have seven hills and you have seven cathedrals on each one of those hills at the very end of this line of hills, you have the large Bombay Cathedral, where underneath the cathedral, there is a special room that, that claims to have one of the nails that, nail, that, uh, that pinned Jesus Christ to the cross. And you can go in and you can see this ancient nail embedded in this ornate golden and bejeweled cross. Really, really neat. Uh, the funny thing is this, is that when you come out of that chamber, you have to walk behind the lectern, behind where the priest will uh, will deliver sermons on Sunday. And when you come up out of there, if you look immediately up, you can see a painting of the devil blowing a big wet raspberry right at you. <laughs> and the funny thing about that massive devil blowing the wet raspberry you can only see it from that part of the church. And the reason being is that the painters hundreds of years ago were cheated out of their hard-earned money by the Catholic Church. So the painters, to get revenge, put the painted where they knew only the priests could see because only the priests could go to the lectern. They painted the giant devil blowing a wet raspberry at the priests. And because they were part of a guild, the entire guild refused to cover up the painting of the devil because they, because their people had been robbed of their rightful pay by the Catholic Church. So, hey, <laughs> fun, little, fun little story right there. But what it looks to me, so again, I think, I think this is over by the lectern. Here we have the remains of the seats where someone would be preaching during Sunday. I think that we actually see this, this turned over screen over here on the organ. Ah, that's got to be cool. Uh, I'm Omega, score one for the guild. Yeah, that's why you don't mess with the guild. <laughs> uh, Roblox says, Roblox, you need more than a cross. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're going to need more, for, more than a cross for what's happening in this church. Um, Ruben's not really related, but it's funny. In 2023, I was in a stream of Brazilian YouTubers called Pancovo, and then another came in called uh Blackite. Uh, but we were discussing uh Brazilian things about sin, and guess what? The dude came in and said, But she is cute. Now, every time sin is mentioned, we spam uh, we spam his DM, she is cute. And yes, by Brazilian things, I mean smash or pass. Feel free to use the cross on us. Oh, boy. <laughs> Louisiana, well, Louisa was, wasn't wrong about calling sin the Antichrist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> so I tried to blow it up a little bit more. And what we just see right here is, again, the same thing, not to be overdramatic but the core is going to collapse and we get more shots here. Ooh, let me actually bring it on back. Like I said, uh, as we get closer, we see that there's a whole bunch of equipment here to, uh, to have an eye on what was happening, run their experiments, run their diagnoses of what absolute solver was doing to the earth's core. 
maybe pull the plug before it starts barrowing its way into your planet's core. Uh, because if you lose the core, you end up like Mars, a dead planet. And here we have it. We have the creepy pit. Oh, all that flesh. It's like the Zarlac pit. Look at this disgusting thing. And if you do zoom in, you will start finding bones uh, within those tendrils of flesh. There's like a rib cage. There's some spines and other things. Mmm, tasty. Ah, and here we have it. The apocalypse begins. So outside in the storm underground, we have the mat, the, the, the ritual commences. We have red lightning. We have all these flashing lights. The church no longer looks warm and inviting. It all is red, black, uh, destructive, foreboding, evil. So yeah, this is this I think that I think that this is going to be at the end of the episode when the ritual is initiated. Or this could be part of the flashback when the uh, ritual was initiated originally and, and copper nine was nuked uh, from within itself. So I'm not exactly sure. I personally would probably put my money on this being an end of the episode kind of a thing to keep things really tense as Uzi is completely taken over by absolute sulfur. The ritual begins and everything starts going to hell in a handbasket. And then we end it right there. That would be my guess. That would be my guess for how the episode's going to end to leave us on a cliffhanger. Uh, Robox, that's where Arby's gets their meat. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Absolute Solver is higher dimensional theory. Imagine our universe is just a black orb floating around in a white orb, which doesn't contain just one, but millions of half parts. Okay. Uh, Roblox, that might explain why it's raining. Um... It's funny that without no core, there would be no magnetic field, meaning no protection against the solar storms. Yeah, isn't our planet amazing? <laughs> uh, Mojo, and outside of that white orb are more of those white orbs floating around in an abyss that there's this massive entity that these orbs are nothing but simple marbles that it observes in its hand. Kind of like the end of uh, Men in Black, the first Men in Black. The best men in black. <laughs> so here's just another shot of the of the storm. Uh, we see the we see a cyclone above the cathedral again. Uh, creepiness ritual being initiated. We see the entire cathedral being lit up by lightning. Oh, it's so cool. Hey, remember that scene? Excellent. And. Let's hear from there. Okay, so here we come to the tendrils. I really don't know what to make of these. Um, I I think that the I think that as the absolute solver begins waking up, or more likely, more likely, what I think is that this is part of the flashback where creatures started coming up out of the pit as Absolute Solver started taking on some sort of form, as we were going to see in another screenshot, and started killing the humans. That is what I believe this is. This is Absolute Solver taking on a, another form in order to begin its destruction back when the planet was first uh, was first nuked from within. So Mojo Joe says, yeah, I imagine the Solver's like that. Okay, cool, cool. We're on the same page then. Uh, are we at E second 14 yet? <laughs> uh, don't know. We are not even halfway through yet. Yay. And we've almost gone on for two hours <laughs> and looking scared. Oh, poor N what shall ever happen? There is the briefest. There's the briefest moment in one of the frames where it looks like there's someone right behind him. Most likely Uzi. So creepiness is about to ensue. Poor little guy. Uh, Mojo says, I remember there was, I remember there was a teaser where there are two sharp tendrils and Tessa are fighting them all throughout. Uh, these were not seen in episode six, 
So maybe we'll see this in episode seven. Maybe so. <laughs> oh no, he read he read Boozy Uzi. <laughs> Don't read that, please. Oh no. Oh no, I do not need to know Ruben. Okay, cool thing right here. Crucified drone. Someone has been crucified right here. This again is very likely part of the ritual. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because again, da, 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 let it run its course a little bit right here. I have another image for you. Bam! From the night of the Elliot Manor uh, Gala Massacre, here we have V standing underneath a crucified angel. Really cool and creepy. And of course, underneath her is where Absolute Solver has been doing all of its creepy experiments on the other drones, has been building what will eventually be the murder drones, the disassembly drones. And, and I, I feel like this is once again, just part of this ritual. We don't know all, we don't know all of the different elements to it yet, but just when, like when you pop on back, like cool, like, yeah, this is cool for aesthetics. Like, look at this crucified drone up here. Chances are it has something to do with whatever, whatever allows absolute solver to do its thing. So... <laughs> that, that drone got got treated dirty bro for real <laughs> uh yeah uh being ripped apart and transformed and all that yeah that's a horrible way to go uh let's see here roblox it's definitely that it's definitely the absolute solver it could be past or present because an old caesar where we see solver attacking them all right So moving on. But yeah, that's a cool little connection right there. Now then, here we have the humans. So this is obviously before everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Here we have the equipment to uh, look into what Absolute Solver is doing. We have the lights pointed down towards the lectern area, which has all been ripped apart later on. We have the humans kind of freaking out because here's our uh, because things are going red. Here we have the symbol of the uh, of the uh, cabin fever labs way up in the back. I want to know what these guys are actually worshiping down here. <laughs> Roblox it looks like he's having a case of the Mondays. <laughs> so yeah, things are going really bad. Here is Doctor Chambers. Right here, he most likely is wearing a hard hat. It looks kind of like a cowboy hat from where I'm standing. Uh, that's just me. That's just me being an Arizonan. Uh, but it's I, I like I like how Liam Vickers is sticking to his his rule that we don't actually ever get to see the humans properly. They're either always in shadow or they're wearing something, so we actually can't actually see what they truly look like. And I appreciate that. That's cool. I, I like that actually, <laughs> because the show's focus is on the drones, not on the humans. And if you see the humans, even if we hate the humans because they're dumb, you will still end up sympathizing with them on some sort of level. And the idea is for us to sympathize more with the drones because this is their story. So that's a neat little storytelling element that we see playing out right here. Uh, Roblox saying definitely looks like they discovered this place and they did not build it. I've won about that that is something that could absolutely be the case that and that could tie into the more ancient origins of absolute solver and if we do indeed get a second season the second season would be more about fighting absolute solver kind of more across the cosmos i think finding out what it exactly was doing what kind of influence it has and so forth uh, from there uh, want to be writer, the Elliot Manor massacre was kind of a ritual itself before the collapse. Something similar happened in here. I agree with that. I think that's a very good assessment. Uh, iconic says a cowboy hat would be funny. The humans never look good in this would never, could never look good in the show's art style. And I do agree with that. Uh, 
<laughs> Ruben says, all right, guys, it's Joe over. I will have to go. <laughs> no way I'm going further than I already did. Too tired for that. Well, Rubens, thank you for hanging out with us tonight and for bringing your humor as always. Hey, welcome. Unfortunately, I cannot read Japanese. I, I want to see what the translation to the name is right there. But hi. Uh, and uh, and uh, Mojo Service. The thing behind N did not look like Uzi in the slightest. It for real looked like Gaster from Undertale. Yeah, maybe. Uh... Let's see here. Why be uh, writer? What writer? Why be also has asked? Have you also checked out SSTWL? Right now, my brain is having is having a fart moment, and I cannot compute what SSTWL is. So I'm going to say no at the moment. So I was told to has to go back to. Uh, to our freaked out N. Well, here's the thing is that you don't actually see uh, whoever's standing behind him. It is in another frame, which I didn't capture. Scary story time with Liam. No, I have not read the scary story time with Liam. Oh, it's not Japanese. It's Chinese. All right. Well, thank you for correcting me. And Rubens, thanks again for being here. Bye. Ah, okay, Scary Story Time is Liam Vickers' older channel. Yeah, he's he's had some real incarnations with his storytelling. The guy's been around doing his thing for a while. Uh, so here we have Uzi getting possessed. I mean, we already kind of knew that this is what was coming. Uh, there's her little mouth going absolutely flat. Poor Uzi. All righty. Got to play. Got to play in order for it to go on. So here she is looking up at the screen. The really creepy scene. And hey, look. Do you guys see the ninja star? I hope you do. Yeah, that makes me laugh. You got the little ninja star. We also have, very likely, a whole bunch of papers and whatnot all stapled up here. Uh... Like her own little creepy kooky board. So I think we already know where episode 7 is. So I think we should theorize more on episode 8. We could. But first we have to figure out if. First we have to figure out if. Uh, while any of our theories or observations for episode 7. Actually lead to where we think they're going to go. Uh, <laughs> may I remind all of the shippers that just because we got it, we got some really excellent, uh, envy scenes in episode five, we got to watch that all sink at the end of episode six. And then episode six just said, Hey, guess what? No one is safe. Your shipping wars don't matter here. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think anyone saw episode two coming either, but how it really shook things up with, with absolute solver and uh, with Uzi and N already parting ways, and only for them to come, suddenly come back together again in episode three, a lot of things just kind of get thrown at us uh, and we get thrown for a loop. Ah, uh, here we got Tessa. Good old Tessa with her massive sword. Speaking to speaking to Uzi and Uzi before her possession because my, everything though it's washed out in red, you can still see the the purple pinpricks of her eyes reflected in the black visor. So most likely Tessa's gearing up to to kill Uzi. This is down in the crypt or the catacomb or the hell hole, so you can again see the slots for the. Uh, for the corpses right behind Tessa. Mojo asks, will Solver Form Doll happen? I don't know. Interesting thing about, uh, about Doll is that she really has been her own agent this entire time, completely independent of so many other things that's been going on. I don't know what to make of Doll. I really don't. 
She could be the absolute hero of the day who's been going against everything, who has been fending off absolute solver, who has all the information needed to save the day. Or she could just be an agent of chaos. She could be simply out for revenge, much like Tessa is. Uh, who knows? Uh, I, I really don't know. That's why I don't really, that's why I haven't actually done any video discussing Doll. Because Doll is such an enigma. Uh, Tessa is such an Aussie. She's a baddie. <laughs> Doll could be an anti-hero. Potentially, which I mean, yeah, she does work against the other heroes all to further her own ends, which seem to be to help save the world. So that would fit an anti-hero uh, archetype. It's just, it's so hard to tell with Doll. But yeah, if she is a hero, she's definitely an anti-hero because of how many people she's gotten killed over the course of the series. And then we got the dog. Feast your eyes while you can because this dog is not going to show up in the episode. Oh, look at this cute little doggy you. Uh, could be Doggo N coming around later on. Who knows? <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I, I love all the references to good boys and dogs, like dogs everywhere throughout the series. I don't know how much relevance it has. Maybe it is all winks and nods towards true form. And we don't really know. Or it could just be fun little Easter eggs because Liam Vickers really loves dogs. <laughs> Nori was a catch. Oh, she certainly was. <laughs> Roblox. Also, about how I mentioned the old tech, I think that the solver cannot interact with it because it's not advanced enough for the solver to use. So the humans figured this out and only use that now. I think that's actually a pretty good uh, assumption right there, Roblox. I, and that would be something I would love to see in a second season. Uh, N's plushie needs to be remade. <laughs> I mean, you have the N plushie. I do have the N plushie. I don't have the doggo plushie. Uh, what the dog doing? The dog is the dog is just there being cute. That's what that dog is doing, and what a good boy it is. All right, and then here we have, so here we have N reaching out to Uzi. Uzi is beginning to be possessed. Look at that; she's got a knife in her hand. She's all crumpled and everything. This is probably going to be the scene, whereas we've seen. Uh, in the other teaser where N reaches out to take her hand and then Uzi crushes his hand. That's probably this scene right here. That would be my guess. Is this a Snoop Dogg reference? It's probably Liam's dog. I agree with Michael. It's probably Liam's dog. Well, Lover Wolves all says, I'm guessing that's Liam's dog because we know he really likes doggos. Exactly. I, I do believe that it's Liam's dog. <laughs> and not just some doggo hanging around uh, Glitch Productions. Though, again, the iconic uh, scene from The Godfather, where The Godfather is uh, is uh, petting the cat, um, Mar uh, Marlon Brando just happened to pick up a stray cat uh, that was hanging around uh, the studio and brought it on in and just was petting it the entire time while he was doing his whole, you should have come to me sooner. Then we could have avoided your daughter ending up the way that she did. <laughs> uh, why is her right hand uh, off in this shot, though? So coming back uh, to it real quick, why is her right hand off? It's because she's most likely holding a knife. And is being possessed. Now then, we finally come to the cross. Oh... Oh, oh, look at just look at this creepiness right here. Okay, then. There's a lot going on in this scene. There's, I say there's a lot going on in this shot. And I don't know really and truly what we've got. Uh, what, what we've got going on here. Oh, hand light, not right hand. Uh, I don't know, Iconic. Let me first, though, talk about this before we go back. So here we have again a disembodied hands reaching for a cross that's being held by Absolute Solver up before a paused screen. Are the hands in the screen or are they reaching on up? What is this cross for? Who knows? 
who knows? But again, it's probably just another element of the overall ritual. Because again, when we were when we were looking back, when we look back to everything that was over in Tessa's room, there was a lot of there was a lot of voodoo iconography and occult stuff there. Underneath the library is where we saw was where we saw more Christian iconography, which had been bastardized through the occult. And a lot of callbacks to a lot of callbacks to old vampire stories. And I think in a way we're kind of coming full circle right here. Like why the cross? Why the cross and all of this? And I, and I'll throw something on out here. And this could be entirely irrelevant to what is going on. Uh, what's going on right here? But remember, this is very likely. This episode is very likely a homage to apocalyptic horror, which. You have those showdowns in the church in the churches because the churches are supposed to be the most holy place to ward off evil. And then evil comes in and the showdown happens. Well, we got a lot of references to the murder drones being essentially a variation on vampires way early on. Vampires are not supposed to be able to stand up against a cross, especially a blessed cross made of silver. Is this cross made of silver? Who knows? It could be made of copper because copper is the ultimate weakness of the absolute solver. <laughs> In any case, we've got this cross right here, which is supposed to ward off evil. It's supposed to keep everything back. When you see a cross, traditionally, that should be a holy symbol that keeps you safe. In, within this church that has become corrupted, within this cathedral, which acts as a doorway to whatever the absolute solver is intending to do. The cross, the symbol of holiness and protection, is in the grasp of Absolute Solver itself. And if you've seen stuff like Van Helsing uh, or other or or stuff, I believe, um, uh, what's the weird Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he takes on the devil? His name is escaping me at the moment. The devil shows himself to be so powerful because he's able to take the cross and not be destroyed by it. It is a way of showing. You cannot defeat me. <laughs> and it's meant to be the lowest point for the heroes before they are either ultimately defeated or figure out a way of stopping whatever the evil is attempting to do. Uh, so coming back on over here uh, to what Pila said. Uh, now that I think about it, Uzi could be holding a cross as a blessing and not a knife. That could be the case. That could actually be what, what she might be holding on to. Moses says, I'm curious why mostly women have been hosts of the solver. It's either Liam loves making unstoppable women or the solver is just a sim. Let's go with it. The solver is just a sim. <laughs> Uzi was holding the crucifix when reaching for N. Okay, so now let's hop on back. It's hard to tell. I could see that. I could see that being the cross... The angle's a little off. She's either using the 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 uh, the branching parts of the cross as kind of a hilt to help her stand on up. I don't quite know. It could be the cross. Let's say it could be the cross. And if it is, that'll be very interesting because that means that she has stolen a component necessary then for the ritual and they're trying to escape. Ooh, that could be what's happening right here. They've stolen a component, a necessary component of the ritual. They're trying to escape. Absolute Solver is taking her over in order to regain this necessary component for its overall ritual. That would be very interesting to see what's happening right here. Uh, Roblox, I think that nothing in Episode 7 is flashback, but that's being viewed from a camera recording from the incident and when they found this place. I like that. I, I Actually, I would really like that if that were the case. Uh, since we've already had an entire flashback episode and we've had like other little funny flashback moments, it would be neat to see it all play out in real time. And that's a better, and sometimes that's a nice way of shaking up all of, uh, shaking things up, especially after we've had an entire episode dedicated to a flashback, a corrupted flashback, but a flashback nonetheless, uh, da, 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 da. iconic, uh, replying to Mojo. In design, the absolute solve for equivalent only possesses women as well. Liam has been going 
with these tropes for 10 years. Yeah, he loves his tropes. He absolutely does. And to be fair, most writers do. We all have certain tropes that we absolutely love, certain archetypes that we really love. If you read my books, you will find out that I really do enjoy writing really tall buff women. Yes, it's true. I do like that. <laughs> I also like to I also like to uh, to have fun with the concept of faith since most YA books are normally about pushing back against the concept of faith rather than making characters ultra religious as a way to push back against it. Instead, I like to explore if what if you thought that it's like, oh, religion is dumb and all, and then something were to happen, and you're like, wait, what? You mean to tell me that there's a god? Or in one book's case, you mean to tell me that there are gods? There's a whole pantheon of them? I don't know what to think of my life now. I enjoy writing from that perspective because it is very different from going ultra-religious or going anti-religion, which is normally what we see most writers do. I like playing around in that messy middle. <laughs> Uh, the solver being held back by chains, the chains of God. Roblox, ah, that caught me off guard. Maybe we see Robo Jesus and he will come down and die for the sins of the drones and defeat the solver. We have had a reference reference to Robo Jesus. Robo Jesus could definitely show up in all of this. <laughs> I imagine the solver is the devil. Uzi wants to call the solver Robo Satan. So yeah, so we have had references to Robo Satan, Robo Jesus. That would be really weird, though, if Liam goes all the way there. But if he does, mad respect. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Popping on back on over here. Again, I really feel like this is just going to be a shot, a moment that's going to basically hearken to your traditional apocalyptic horror where the great evil demonstrates its power over what was traditionally thought to be safe and good. And that the heroes are either then going to be defeated or discover the real way in which to defeat the great evil. That's that. That's again what I kind of take away from this shot. We don't really have the context to it otherwise, but that would be what it means within this subgenre of horror. This is cool. This is a nice little establishing shot right here, as very likely Uzi is opening up the door leading into the cathedral proper, into the chapel. And I love how you can just have this stab of red light leading up to where the lectern's been destroyed, to where the computers are, and here you have all of the destroyed pews. This is just a beautiful shot. Right, Robo Bible, and then is the first disciple. <laughs> uh, probably going to be a scene cut moment. Maybe. That would actually be a good like scene cut moment, like jump over then to test. And you're like, no, what's going to happen next? So here we've got a little reference, of course, to Nori, because Nori was a part of the uh, uh, of the cat of the uh, cabin fever labs. And since this is all about meeting, uh, basically reconnecting with the past, as far as uh, Dahl and Uzi are concerned, of course, we're going to come back to Nori. Good old Nori. What a cat she was. Oh boy, I'm simping for a robot. What does it say about me? <laughs> okay then. So this is interesting right here because this is kind of like the whole like Gravity Falls moment uh, with the with uh, with the episode "Not What He Seems" when the portal is opened up and the town is being torn apart by gravity wells and rifts. That's kind of what we're seeing right here. It seems as though gravity is being suspended, tearing everything up across Copper Nine. And this is very likely not a flashback moment, but uh, uh, but very likely a result of the storm that is going off down underground as as the planet is being shaken and taken once again by Absolute Solver. So this is going to be an establishing shot. Probably we're going to get a fun cutaway uh, to the uh, to the drones. In fact, you can kind of see two drones here. In a uh, sandwich between uh, the the car part and the submerged car, and uh, they are not uh, it's, it's not good for them. I don't know if it's Lizzie or Thad here, iconic. If it is, that would be cool. It'd be nice to see them again. I don't know if that's them though. If, you, if someone's got a way better image of that, then uh, then yeah. Um, uh, 
Sir uh, Mojo says the solver is probably controlling Uzi and getting ready to make Copper 9 go kaboom. And these drones are literally Thad and Lizzie. Again, I don't really see it, but maybe if someone again has a better blown up image, uh, they can probably see it better than I can. Uh, the Amazing Gamer 111 says, if I had to guess, episode seven is going to end the same way uh, season four of Stranger Things did with the upside down broke into the surface worlds. Iconic. It's 100% Lizzie. A lot of people agree that that is there as well. Okay. I'm just have to see. Uh, Mojo, uh, some man managed to draw an outline of their bodies and it matched that and Lizzie perfectly. Okay. Well, it'd be good to see those guys again because heavens to Betsy knows uh, we need some levity in our lives. We're probably not going to get any uh, <laughs> during this moment. Yeah, so it's nice to it's nice to have a shot to show what exactly is happening to the overworld as a result of Absolute Solver's machinations. And here we have Murderous N. Oh, so so glorious, so handsome, right there. Um, while it could easily be speculated that this is that this is N after Absolute Solver takes him over again, again, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this is going to be N kind of breaking down and going berserk, which is about high time that we see him do something like that. Uh, speaking of which, why are they floating is what Roblox asks. asks uh, probably gravity well nonsense. As a plan, as the planet is being ripped apart from the inside, all thanks to uh, all thanks to black hole shenaniganery. N killing Nori flashback real could be the case. Here's the thing, though. I am going like I know that I know that Matt Pat uh, really championed this idea that what's going to break Uzi is learning that N killed her mother. I don't see that being a good reason for her to completely snap. And my reasoning for that is that how many people has Uzi seen get killed? Like, like seriously. Like, she's completely desensitized to some of the most bizarre scenes of murder thus far. And true, while it would be really sad to find out that that uh, that N is the one who stuck her mother with his nanite acid, which then led uh, Khan to have to completely disable and kill her. What I what I would think is that she has already gone through that moment. Remember back to episode two, she completely broke down and freaked out when she saw what absolute solver had done with the memory of her mother, when she wasn't sure if she could trust that N was actually there. She became absolutely terrified of N, but yet she got over that because she knew that she needed him. She's fallen in love with him. And while it would be devastating to learn that the drone who you want to be your boyfriend is very likely your mother's murderer, I don't see that as a reason for her to truly snap. Rather, instead, it would be something that would be horrifying to learn, something really sad. And it could be that Absolute Solver springs that knowledge on her to try to make her distrust N, but I feel like that's not going to work in the end. Uh, that, that is my, that is my honest, that's my honest opinion for how that goes down. Just because their relationship is so dang strong, it's already been challenged multiple times at this point and in very visceral ways too, uh, not just in episode two, but also in episode four. And ultimately the confirmation that we got at the end of episode six of how far they've progressed and how much they need each other, how they support each other. I, I could see, again, I could see Absolute Solver trying to use that knowledge to break them apart, but I don't think it's going to work. It would definitely fit in within its MO of torturing its victims and trying to hurt them on a personal level, but I don't think that that Uzi's going to flip out if she finds out that N is the one who killed her mother. And so it's weird because, for me, it like it'd be like, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, it's sad, but it's cool. And now we've got confirmation, but I don't feel like that really changes the dynamic too much. And that, and that is a drawback of doing so much character development and, and relationship progression to the point where that you try to throw in something awful to shake things up. It becomes really hard to accept that something awful would really hurt these two 
unless they made a conscious choice to do so. And it's hard for me to see that happening right here, but that's just me. We'll see what, we'll see what goes down in the next episode and that can then be discussed. Um, Roblox says, I think that since it's been speculated that so much, they could have changed it from changed that from being the case. It's true. And we've seen that happen again with gravity falls. Gravity falls ended up only being two seasons because Alex Hirsch was, was both impressed and upset that people had solved so many of his mysteries so soon. So he's like, why bother dragging it out to introduce Ford? Let's in, just introduce Ford sooner, wrap things up. And that was the right call to make, not because it's what the story needed. In fact, the story needed a whole three seasons because they had so many great ideas to expound upon, but because Disney was going to ax Gravity Falls. Absolutely. Disney did not like Gravity Falls. and wanted to get rid of, uh, get rid of Gravity Falls. And Alex Hirsch made sure to end Gravity Falls on his terms. And he saved the show from getting the Owl House treatments. Oh, yeah, man, there's a rant there to be had. Uh, Mojo, but if it was true, it wasn't N's fault, really. It was just programmed by the solver. Doll made V remember that she killed Doll's parents in episode three. So, yeah, like it, that's true. And we could see something like that, that, like that pop up again. I just, again, think that it won't have quite the impact that some people think it will. I just think it'll be something that helps kind of bring things full circle if that's the confirmation that we get. Uh, writer wannabe, like Cthulhu, the absolute solver might torment her and drive her mad along with the possession. That could be really good to see. I actually would really enjoy seeing that happen. Not because I love seeing characters tortured, but because that would absolutely fit um, absolute solver's MO. Uh, Roblox, we haven't seen and eat someone in a while. Overheating, perhaps? Uh, yes, that could definitely happen. Liam did admit that he kind of forgot about that ever so crucial aspect to his characters. So, yeah, it's about time that he uh, deliver again on that. Uh, the Amazing Gamer 111, perhaps while Uzi's mom, well, perhaps while Uzi, Uzi's off on her own, she finds something so bizarre to her that that's when the solver completely takes over her mind. And when N finds her again, it's already too late to save her. That could be interesting to see. Maybe that has something to do with what's down in the pits. Who knows? Uh, Rob, uh, <clears throat> Mojo's responding to Roblox. Liam said that N and V and N eat oil off screen. Yeah, he has to say that because he admitted, he actually admitted in an interview that he completely forgot that he was so interested in other things that he was doing that he did not keep up with his own world building. So he just waved his hand and said, oh, they're eating oil off screen. And there's plenty of oil for them to eat without having to kill other drones. Uh, so everything works out just fine. But yeah, Liam himself realized he's like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, they <laughs> Iconic says right here, Liam also said they completely dropped the oil plot points. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that was just, that. that's what happened. And, and, and I do have comments about it. I want to expound on that a little bit more in a future video. But what I'll say right here is this. Writers, especially even architect writers, but especially garden or discovery writers, people who come up with the story as they go along, it's so easy to have a great plot point in your mind and then to lose it along the way. Or you introduce something as an architect, right? You're like, this is going to be so important for later on. <laughs> I can't wait for them to see what I do with this. And then like halfway through your book or in your second book, you realize that was actually a really stupid idea. Instead, I want to do this now. And you either have to just let that thread spin off and be forgotten, hopefully, or you have to find a way of wrapping it up so that way you don't have to worry about it again. This happens to so many writers. Uh, and so I, I do not fault Liam for that happening. Liam, though, could have made it better by simply doing a whole lot more to more properly plan out his whole series and how he was going to execute it. And I think that some things might have changed along the way based on the reception that Murder Drones got. We just don't know. We don't know what's all been happening behind the scenes, and that's just pure speculation on my part. Uh, Mojo Service, is it possible to return life back to Copper 9? With proper terraforming, yes. Yeah, by the end of this season, I don't see that happening. Uh, and the amazing gamer one one one. In terms of human life, I think that they, I think they've served their time on Copper Nine. Mojo Service, imagine that there's more than one solver. Yeesh. Dangerous, crazy. All right, so moving on, and I'm going to take another drink. Ah, wet my whistle. All right, so moving on then from 
angry, murderous end, we then get to the extinguished, not the distinguished, because that would make them very important and popular, the extinguished brazers that we saw earlier with the symbols of the cabin fever labs, leading to some rift in the Earth's core. We got Tessa hanging out right here. This is going to be interesting. I think that we're going to get a little bit of an A and B plot. I think that the A plot is going to be Uzi and N doing their own thing within the cathedral. I feel like Tessa is going to have a B plot where she goes off and does her own thing, seeking out revenge. And that this is part of it right here. That's my guess. And uh, that's just why based off of what I've seen of Tessa so far and what this particular screenshot uh, suggests to me. Uh, the Amazing Gamer says, Liam's actions as a writer is what's known as pantser. Or prancer? A pantser uh, writer is someone who just makes it up as they go and connects loose plot points at random points in the story. Or as I said, it's what uh, it's what uh, George R. Martin once termed as discovery writers, and it's what uh, Brandon Sanderson called garden writers. I like to refer to myself as a Hanging Gardens of Babylon writer. Uh, which, fun fact, ah, the, the historian me coming on out, the original Hanging Gardens were inspired by the Assyrian Hanging Gardens, and they were called the Hanging Gardens because the Assyrians thought that really great decor was hanging up dead corpses. So it was called the Hanging Gardens because it was a great thing to just be surrounded by all these dead bodies in your beautiful garden. Yay, Assyria was really weird. <laughs> Uh, Iconic says, I'm sure there's some kind of plan for the series. I do believe that there is a plan, Iconic. But plans do change as you write and as you create. Uh, Moja says, maybe this is where they find the lockers? Maybe. Maybe. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting to see that more of the Cabin Fever labs are kind of left off to the side away from the cathedral. So uh, moving on along and unfortunately Roblox, I don't think we're ever going to get any answer to exactly where absolute solver comes from. Cause that kind of takes away the mystery and the danger of it all. One of the things that really makes horror that makes monsters within horror truly terrifying is that you never really understand them. The more that you understand of the creature, the less scary it becomes. It's very hard to keep a creature terrifying when you've seen it and when you know what it is. That's actually one of the reasons why the Xenomorph is one of the best horror monsters of all time because, because even when you see it, it's still such a visceral, terrifying, dangerous thing. And the way in which it, and the way in which it procreates is so nauseating and horrifying that even though you know what it's doing, it's still just... Ugh! And then you pad it out with jump scares. But it's hard to replicate that for most other horror uh, creatures. And so I think the Absolute Solver is going to largely remain a mystery uh, throughout. Now here we've got Dr. Chambers facing down whatever creature is climbing out of the horrifying pit that Absolute Solver has created. And I think it's interesting that we're seeing some sort of clawed uh, hand or a foot, much like a, a bird of prey. I would guess is what's coming for his face. And uh, either this guy's an absolute Chad and is, and is able to stare down these monsters or he's so terrified and has no idea that he's about to die. <laughs> but in any case, uh, something awful and evil is coming up on out of here. And Dr. Chambers is facing it down. Um, and uh, this will be interesting. This will be very interesting to see play out. Because, again, it's, it, it's, it's noteworthy that Absolute Solver is obsessed with creating bodies, with creating flesh. And here we have it doing just that. Could it possibly be that it's replicating a creature from another alien world? Or is this something from its own side? Who knows? This will be very interesting to see play out. Uh, Amazing Gamer 111, us writers have wondrous imaginations, do we not? We absolutely do. And we should revel in it and share that imagination because unfortunately too much of the world has too many people I've met have just have 
of their own volition, they've even admitted to me, they don't like being imaginative. They once were as kids, but they felt that in order to grow up, they shouldn't be creative or imaginative anymore. And that's just sad because you should never give that up. The imagination is such a powerful tool. Well, they say that the mind is the, re is the last refuge of the soul. And it's true. The, your, your imagination can help you out with so many things in life. Don't give it up. Cherish it. The Amazing Gamer 111. Dark Ch Dr. Chambers. This guy feels important purely because they gave him a name. They, could have, they couldn't have done that for no reason. But then James Elliott, Tessa's dad, didn't do anything important or noteworthy. Well, he did have his daughter. Well, he, he did at least support his, his wife in having their daughter chained to the bed. Uh, which, uh, which, yeah, that, that kind of changes some things that kind of traumatizes and horrifies their daughter. <laughs> so, oh, oh, poor Tessa. Uh, and plus he had really an epic line before he got killed. So <laughs> the Elliots are known for many things, being rich, famous, currently being alive. <laughs> Uh, Solver creating portals for its army. If it has an army, that would be interesting. I don't think it necessarily has one. I think it just creates as it needs, uh, if that's what we're going to see. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see where we go at this particular point in the episode when we get to the when we get to this a confrontation between Absolute Solver and Dr. Chambers. Uh, the Amazing Gamer says, I noticed in the footage... The hand here is not only glitching, but smoking. Could it be exposed to the sun here and the red filter is hiding that? Maybe. And that would be very interesting because, again, we know that the sun is meant to be fatal to the disassembly drones. And, and, that all, and that actually could be another reason for why a storm has to be created in order to complete the ritual, just in case any sunlight comes through that it can be warded off and not injure Absolute Solver. That is potentially the case. Uh, we'll have to see uh, what, where we go from there. Uh, James Elliott was probably scared of his wife. I'm scared of his wife. <laughs> Iconic. Absolutely, James. At least Khan has some self-awareness. Yeah, and Khan was given a small little redemption arc, trying to be a better dad. Good on you, Khan. I would like to see more of you. Um... The amazing Amber James Khan made the effort to try and improve himself for his daughter. Good on you, Khan. Exactly. So moving on. Oh, look at that. We are now actually fairly far along. Woohoo! Uh, question from Mojo Service. Need a straight answer. Do you think Uzi will really perish in episode seven? Really perish is a hard is I don't think she will actually be dead. I think she will be possessed. I think her body will be destroyed, but I don't think that means she's going to die. And my reasoning for that is because Absolute Solver's been within her for so long. Like, as I said earlier, all of the cores that Alice retrieved could have been from her old co-workers, which would then say that the longer you're with Absolute Solver, the more like a disassembly drone you become, which means you would have a core that would allow you to return in some kind of way. So I don't see Uzi dying, but I see Uzi definitely getting possessed. And I think there's even a very good chance that Uzi will have her body destroyed either in the seventh episode or sometime during the eighth. That is my, that is my guess. Uh, Khan was so bad at parenting. He needed a manual. <laughs> yeah. I don't see Uzi dying before the final episode. I agree with you. Iconic. Uh, could be could she become a part of the solver? Absolutely, which is why I think that N might have to be the one who goes into the singularity to try to save her. Uh, what if the humans figured out how to create light with some radiation uh, with the same radiation as the sun? I mean, I think it hasn't been exploited. Potentially, we might find on out. Uh, the amazing gamer says perhaps like Jay Uzi's body will be preserved as a puppet, giving her a chance for survival. I, I can definitely see that being the case. This is interesting right here because as we see oil dripping out through Uzi's hand, and this is interesting as well because also Doll started wearing an eye patch. Uh, it could be that Uzi is undergoing the same thing that happened to Doll. 
that eventually that uh, the absolute solver insignia just kind of burns its way right through her visor and then just starts bleeding out, bleeding out oil. Uh, Michael says, so JC Jensen rebuilt stuff. That might mean that earth was already in a post-apocalyptic state before sin went rogue. Maybe, maybe we're, we're definitely missing a lot of earth's past and what JC Jensen was doing. And kind of says we see the same visor break with Yeva. Yes, we do. We definitely see that. So, uh, so yeah, the longer the absolute solver is in you, the the damage is done to the host's body. So you're not meant to survive if that's the case. Ah, and then there's there's doll. There she is, the sweet murderous enigma. <laughs> hey, Shade, welcome. Uh, so yeah, so doll, doll who's probably already gone through the same thing. Cause again, she's got her little eye patch going on right here. I think she's fighting against Uzi right here, but that's just pure speculation on my part. We can see the tendrils of flesh, uh, going on right here, but it's, it's hard to tell otherwise. We're definitely missing some context. This could be a sword fight. And it could be that, he, that she's fighting against Tessa. That would be really cool. I mean, we got a cleaver right here. Cleaver versus broadsword. Uh, but I, I don't know if it's going to be doll versus Tessa. It could happen at some point. I just don't know. We are definitely lacking context for understanding what's absolutely what's going on around here. This could be a sword. This could be a knife. It could be one of the glaives that was up at the front of the church versus her cleaver. Uh, I like that she's still using her signature weapon back from uh, episode three. So coming back around here. So the Amazing Gamer says, interestingly, maybe this could be blood as Uzi coughed up blood when getting into the elevator in episode six and Solver has a strong connection to flesh. Okay, maybe. And maybe that's one of the things that like damages the host body over time is that it's trying is that absolute solver is trying to force a drone to become fleshy. Like what we actually saw happen to V and to some of the other uh, drones uh, back in episode five. If Nori's anything to go by, then we know that a drone can be assimilated into the solver and still be in their own body at the same time. Based on episode based off episode two, unless something happened after a drone killed her. Yeah, and that's true. And again, I think that Absolute Solver just kind of uh, always keeps aspects of its victims and can then use them again whenever it feels like it or needs to. Hannah, goodness. Uh, is anyone, if anyone's going to kick the buck in episode seven, with no doubt, it's Doll. Oof. That'd be kind of sad because Doll's gone on such a journey thus far. But yeah, I could see Doll kicking it. Um, and uh, maybe we'll finally know what she's been all about this whole time. I mean, this is the episode where we're promised to get a whole bunch of answers. So hopefully we'll finally know what the heck Doll's been up to all this time. Why she has done what she's done. Um, they're probably N, She's probably fighting N or Tessa. It could be the case. Uh, Puff Tough. Uh, da -ba -da -ba. So Mojo, a match of sulfurs defeated. The hive mind slowly falls apart and dies. Uh, with the only way N can save Uzi now before she goes down with Solver, N puts Uzi's consciousness in his mind. Well, that would be something. Uh, two souls in one body. And that's an interesting thing to explore. Could definitely uh, be something to spin off of in a, uh, in a second season. Shade says, I wonder if someone with the Absolute Solver program could be affected by the Sentinel's light. They can be. Because the Sentinels were developed to specifically kill people with Absolute Solver. Or to kill the drones who possess Absolute Solver. Which, the thing that kind of makes Nori a little bit of a freak is because we get a screenshot of her back in Episode 6 hanging out with the Sentinels laughing all willy-nilly while Yeva's like freaking out next to her. <laughs> so, Nori's got no fear. Though those Sentinels could probably have easily killed her uh, should, she have exhibited, should she have exhibited any signs of violence towards the humans or any evidence of absolute solver before she went on her freak out. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, 
the robot says uh, it still would have needed to be in her mind to know about Uzi. So it was still possessed as she, so she would still be possessed or at least be, be have been copied uh, as we saw in episode six. I really want to know what the heck is going on behind her though. Same here. This is probably, probably during the ritual. Here's what I actually think. I think that doll wants the ritual to go through because she understands that there is a way to kill or defeat absolute solver by shaking up its ritual. That's what I think she's trying to do. We'll see how that plays out because once you initiate a ritual to summon some sort of evil, uh, it, it's coming and it's going to do whatever it wants to do. And you better know what you're doing. Otherwise you're going to immediately fall prey to it. And that is a very, that is a staple trope within apocalyptic horror. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, continuing on so close here to the end. So we got doll. So doing her thing. Wait, 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 wait. That might be a gun over there to the side. So it could be against uh, N that she's going up against. Anyway. <clears throat> and there's our last shot, the flesh pit, leading down into the bowels of the planets. And again, we kind of get little glimpses of bone and whatnot. All right, around in here, this creepy hole. Where does it lead? What is going on? Is the singularity just beyond? Who knows? <laughs> so, quickly again. Take a drink. <laughs> no, Shade, we don't we don't kink shame or we don't kink shame around here. But wow, Pit X Me. I don't know about that fan fiction. <laughs> Iconic. Mystery Flesh Pit National Park reference. I don't want to go to a national park with a flesh pit. Ugh. <laughs> Amazing Gamer. If Lego Movie 2, Spider-Man No Way Home, etc. have taught us anything, it's that messing with rituals ends badly for everyone. Mojo, while Uzi's, on, while Uzi's consciousness is in N's mind, they try finding Uzi a new body in Season 2. Maybe they find some remains of Uzi's body and perhaps even uh, construct a disassembly drone Uzi? <laughs> Potentially. It could be something that happens. Shade. Haha, <laughs> JK. The Amazing Gamer. Calling out Stranger Things Season 4 <laughs> looks just like a passage into the Upside Down. And maybe that will be the last episode. Maybe the last episode will be a great homage to uh, Stranger Things, which I wouldn't mind. Especially if it's the straight, especially if it's season four with how they utilized uh, D and D and Vecna. Oh, that was just mwah, that was Chef's kiss. That was brilliant. They they you they utilized the references to Vecna so well in Stranger Things season four. Made me very happy. So we got some good ideas for season two. Um, <clears throat> uh, Robox, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. Since we know that absolutely. But Solver had full control over Nori based off Elsa's words, yellow eyes. We know that it has been in her mind, and I think copied a piece of it. And I think that that's a very good, that's a very good chance. Uh, Lover of Wolves, last question for me. Do you think Murder Drones will have a second season? Because it seems like everything will be revealed in these last two episodes. And Lover of Wolves, I, like, I have said now for a very long time that it's very likely that we'll only have one season. And I think that has more to do with how Liam likes to tell his stories and the fact that this is his first time running a show. I don't think that Liam had originally a long-term plan beyond one season. I really don't. I could see a potential second season. And my reasoning for that is because depending on how episode play on how episode eight plays out, if episode eight plays out with N having to save Uzi in some kind of way, and that doesn't work out, if we get a traditional horror ending, it would set up potentially a journey across the stars or across the planet to save what is left of Uzi. Or maybe Absolute Solver is defeated on Copper 9, 
but is still out there in the rest of the cosmos and they have to defeat it. That could also be an excellent uh, premise for a second season. And w- even what is J.C. Jensen doing? Or what, w- what would happen to all the leftover murder drones that Absolute Solver had created? There are plenty of things that can be explored in the second season. It all comes down to what Liam Vickers himself wants to do. I think that if Liam is allowed to absolutely have his way, we only get one season of, se- of murder drones. That is my guess. If uh, if Glitch has managed to convince him, if Kevin and Luke have managed to convince him that he should continue the story because of how much people like it and it makes them money, then then uh, then he will then I think that there's a chance for a second season. It all will come down to what kinds of conversations have been happening off screen between the creators. And that's the best I can say. I believe that everything has been set up for the show to end with one season. But it could go on. It all depends on what they decide to do. And to what uh, and to what amazing gamer says right here, I know people say it's called season one because they must have more. I hate to break it to those who think this, but a lot of shows out there have existed for many years, only have one season. That is absolutely true. Almost every show, even if it was only ever planned for there to be one season, when you actually look it up, it's always described as season one. That's just the way that it goes. I would love. I would love for there to be more murder drones because I, I truly do enjoy the story, the characters, the world. There are so much potential. There's so many more jokes to be had, so much more adventure. It all comes down to what Liam is allowed to do and what kinds of things have been talked about between him and the rest of Glitch uh, Productions. There's de- one of, uh, most, most writers are told... Uh, by their editors to oh my who's trying to call me i will get that later (laughs) uh uh uh, most writers are told by their editors and by their publishers that they that they need to that they need to write a story complete that 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 it, that their first book could be a complete standalone and that the world will go on if they don't manage to get anything else written however uh however they do say leave some loose threads leave some potential for you to do more and and uh if you have the chance to tell more stories if it's well received then you can write more books that is the traditional wisdom uh, in in the realm of creatives. So just just throwing that on out there. Um, yeah, money makes the world go round. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, Mojo of the Pit actually has a portal to the realm of the Eldritch Horrors that could give us a potential true form for Absolute Solver, maybe. Uh uh, Lover of Wolves, thanks for the answer. I'll keep that in mind. I had a lot of fun in the stream. Hope you'll do it again when episode seven releases. I, I'll I'll try to eventually have some discussion of it uh, after it releases. I don't know how fast I'll be able to do a full-on review once it releases, but I'm going to be throwing my all into making that happen after I've watched episode seven because the early bird gets the worm and I definitely want to be able to get out there with, uh, with, with a review of the, of episode seven from a writer's perspective. I think that'd be really good. Um, as shade says, episode seven might end with the ritual ending and the pit opens. That could very well be the case. A good cliffhanger. Uh, the amazing gamer says, let's not forget. There's like eight or something other spires on copper nine more colonies, more murder drones, so that we haven't met yet. So many story opportunities. Absolutely. But if there's not more, the fandom has a lot of fanfic material to work with. It's a win-win. Sure, the fans, if the fans are willing to be positive and be creative, they can keep murder drones alive long after it after it wraps up. So we'll, we'll just have to see. I, like, I, I, I'm not too scared about where it's going to go, just because despite the fact that there's all these people who have made 
long Twitter threads and even videos about the murder drone. Murder drones is dead. And this is why murder drones isn't dead. And there's a lot of excitement there. A lot of people still love the series and it is very well done. It will be remembered. The reason why it's not as popular as it could be is because it's been mishandled, unfortunately, by Glitch Productions, especially in the wake of how popular The Amazing Digital Circus was. And I actually don't fault them for that because they need to make money. If you don't make money, you can't make these amazing episodes. You can't make these gorgeous shows. Unfortunately, you need cash. And if there, and if you have a money maker on your hands, one of the best received um, independent uh, shows of all time, then you're going to have to do something with that. You're going to have to capitalize on that. And that is what Glitch has done. And I don't fault them for that. That's just good business sense. And they have to do that if they want to keep the, the company going and make and make a uh, murder drones as good as it is. Like you look at just how beautiful just that one teaser trailer, this teaser trailer is like coming back to it right here. Cause I mean, that's the end. Uh, so right here. Like just, just look at this. Uh, once it starts going, this is better than most of the stuff that Hollywood creates today. It absolutely is. And they are doing it on a fraction of the budget that any Hollywood production has. So I like I like I I cannot fault them for what they do for what they've been doing. Um, here we have uh, VVX Game Lord. Can't wait to see what happens in the next episode of Murder Drones. I'm really excited now. That's going. Uh, it's going to be great. Also, I hope that Uzi and M will be able to be together because it's so cute. It is cute. I, as I've said to everyone, don't hang your hopes on any one ship because every ship can be sunk in this kind of a story. Shipping is fun. Shipping is great. I love shipping characters. But for a show like Murder Drones, you're going to have to divorce yourself from some of your ships because they might get sunk. And that's just the truth of the matter. Uh, if it doesn't happen and they stay together, then fantastic. If, that, if the ship gets sunk... <laughs> prepare yourself uh, for the for the catastrophe that will rise uh what's the title of the teaser um not sure not sure what the uh what the title for it is let's have a quick let's have a quick look cc do 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 murder drones murder drones Ah, no, nothing right there. Okay, go back to Glitch. Productions. Final Destination. That's the name for it right there. There's your answer, Roblox. Uh, for The Amazing Gamer 111, in a way, uh, The Amazing Digital Circus' success may have been what Glitch needed to even finish Mer Drones. That may be why we've had to wait so long for the next episode. Yeah, because it costs money. And like even like and crunching the numbers and everything... Uh, on my end, if we're going solely off of ad revenue and also what they managed to make from selling a uh, product, the the fact of the matter is is that they like they need to make around three hundred thousand dollars to produce a high quality episode. That's the that's the industry minimum. And just based off of ad revenue alone, they did not make that with any of their episodes for Murder Jones. So they had to make it in in production sales and they have made actually pretty good production sales but it still costs a lot of money and they need to make sure that they keep themselves afloat money 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 <laughs> an amazing gamer a flurry of emotions could be on the horizon for shipping fans best of luck with therapy guys absolutely uh vvx uh game lord well as long as my ship of the character myself and doll is safe and all is well the amazing gamer says, "Yeah, because let's remember the budget for a single murder drones is be murder drones episodes anywhere between a hundred thousand and three hundred thousand dollars. It's expensive, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, the amazing digital circus absolutely empowered Glitch Productions to do so much more going forward. Now, one hundred percent, they could now they could from the from that show's success alone." They can cover the final costs uh, for murder drones, and they are able to easily 
uh, not only uh, not only continue uh, the amazing digital circus, but also green lights um, uh, the uh, the gaslight district. So they can now. So and now we're going to have to see how they do, because they might be juggling anywhere between two to three shows going forward. That'll be something a little bit new for them. I'm excited to see how the company goes from here. Uh, Roblox says, I bring it up because the same name of the movie where the characters are in a death loop and can't escape is well, Final Destination. One, Sin once said, let's reset these memories one more time. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's something going on there. I am very curious to see how things play out. Uh, Roblox, I think you're on to something. It, it could be that the Absolute Solver isn't just some entity that consumes stuff. Things could be happening in play in characters' minds. We could be in a crazy time loop. Could be the absolute solver, uh, much like the uh, much like the uh, mimics from uh, "All You Need Is Kill," are able to reset timelines in order to uh, in order to get the best outcome in a battle. Who knows? We really aren't sure of what absolute solver is all capable of doing. We know it can create flesh. We know it can bring people back from the dead. It can possess. It can it can absorb and consume. It can teleport. It, it has all different kinds of things. Hey, ISO, welcome back. Iconic. It was all a simulation. I really though hope it's not all just a simulation because that that that's the whole. It was all just a dream kind of a thing. And oh, I hate that so much. <laughs> so, well, uh, there. I mean. Yeah, there we've uh, there we've had it. Wow, we've gone on for three hours now, and and that is that is something. And quite a few of you have stuck around throughout the entire thing. So yeah, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I am going to have to start winding down just because that's three hours. That's three hours of talking. I am getting tired. <laughs> But it has been absolutely fantastic to have all of you here for this ride to discuss murder drones. You guys have had great ideas. You've been able to keep me on the straight and narrow for some of these. You've countered my theories and observations with some great ones of yours. And that is the kind of fan conversation that we need to have more of. Not just for murder drones, but really for all the stuff that we like. Because this was awesome. I hope that you guys have had a great time as well. And that this has been a positive experience for you. Even if we haven't always agreed with each other. Like I may not have always agreed with you. You guys haven't always agreed with each other in the chat. But you guys have been fantastic with being respectful. Not only just to me, but to each other. And that is awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Because, again, we just need far more of that. I don't see that very often. Uh, and with a lot of other YouTube channels that, that that I watch that do commentary on shows and entertainment, and they either really quickly devolve into an echo chamber or they try to shut down whoever doesn't agree with them. And I I don't agree with that. Uh, I think big boys and girls can put up with people disagreeing with them. You can agree to disagree. You can move on with your life. And as we all right here in the chat do, we enjoy this show. And it's so much fun to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> man, I so yeah, it would have been great to have you here for the whole thing. Uh, but there will still be a whole lot to talk about. I guarantee that once this episode has aired and once you've had the chance to again talk about it in another live stream and we get to ep and we start discussing what could happen for episode eight. Oh boy, we will be need we will need you along with everyone else here to talk about all of the amazing things that we've seen, all of the horrifying and terrible things, all the sad things, and all of the things that we can theorize about. Because I guarantee we are going to get taken for a ride <laughs> with this with this upcoming episode. Um, uh, from the amazing gamer, I really like what you've posted right here. So, episode one, Twilight. Episode 2, Alien. Episode 3, Carrie. Episode 4, Friday the 13th. Episode 5, The Shining. Episode 6, Jurassic Park and FNAF. Uh, and then episode 7 and 8, we don't yet know. Yes, each episode has been an homage to either a specific genre or to a specific movie. I would actually say, Amazing Gamer, that I think episode 6 is more along the lines of, like, there's definitely elements of Jurassic 
Park and a little bit of FNAF there, but it definitely smacks of the Hills Have Eyes. Uh, there's definitely elements of that within episode six. And, um, oh, uh, and, uh, crud, uh, what's the, uh, not saw, not saw, because saw is when there is when they're being absolutely just it's saw. Uh, oh, crud, that's another torture porn movie. There's major elements of that going on in episode six as well. Uh, but unfortunately my, my mind is blanking on that right now. Uh, <laughs> nobody murder drones ending reality is an illusion. The universe is hologram by gold. Bye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's how we're going to react when, when the murder drones comes to an end, it's all just an illusion. Take us bill cipher. Take us our Dorito master. Take us away to someplace better. Uh, I, so I assure you with all my powers of foresight, I will be here for the review of episode seven when it comes out. Most excellent. And like I said, I am going to try to have my review and analysis of episode seven done as soon as possible after it airs. Uh, uh, I will try to get it out before the next live, before the next live stream after that. Uh, we'll just have to see how things go because I've got no idea how my time is going to go after that. For one thing, because we got Easter uh, that that weekend, and I will definitely be spending time with my family for Easter. Uh, so I will be, I shall be busy. <laughs> the absolute cipher. Oh, that's horrifying. The absolute solver and Bill Cipher have a baby. Oh, that could be a real eldritch abomination right there in more ways than one. Uh, amazing gamer. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure we'll be able to connect all the pop culture adults, uh, pop culture dots when the show is over. Most definitely. It's going to be really fun to do that. But anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for being here for more than three hours. Most of which we've done talking about just this teaser trailer for murder drones. It has been a blast. You guys have all been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And as I close off, until the next video, y'all, tschüss.